to spew nonsense into microphone. So with the slow, graceful flow of age, I went forth with an age-old desire to please O.N. the edge of 17. What? Oh, right. Um. <clears throat> Thanks for subscribing with Prime for 17 months. <laughs> True freak. You're truly a freak of you. You're living your best freak life. And I appreciate that. Thank you for the money that you gave to Amazon that you then told Amazon they should probably give to me because Amazon has too much of it. That's the only thing that Amazon is good at, is having too much money and not spending it on anything of value. Like, you know, providing a good experience to their customers or making their servers function properly most of the time. Cashmere, I'm sorry that you died and I highlighted it in both a short and a video, but fortunately only the short is out, so only the short includes you, your dead body on screen for like a second. I uploaded that short this morning and it's underperforming. Like everything I upload. Until it overperforms. For no reason and I don't understand it. Shrug, sigh, and move on with my day and then say, Hey, you know you should subscribe to my blog. It's free right now. and won't be in the future. Well, part of it will still be free. But like, blindirl.com. <clears throat> Let's play some Dwarf Fort, shall we? You can say hi YouTube now, Twitch chat, if you want. Because I think the YouTube is watching. Hey YouTube, if you're watching, like the stream. I dare you. I, please, <laughs> I I mean it. Like leave, leave leave a leave a leave a like on the stream. We we at Twitch chat appreciate. Hey Twitch chat, like the YouTube stream. There's a link. That I was I was I was killing for time. Now that I'm done killing for time, we're gonna start necromancing for time and resurrect it and uh, open up this door fort save of Spirit Home. YouTube must really have not liked the short. I mean, you did YouTube like the short? Let's see. Did, did YouTube like the short? Or did YouTube dislike the short? Or did they forget the short exists and install the plugin that makes no shorts get shown to them? Oh, no, they did like the short. It's got 100% positive likes. That's why it's not getting any traction. Clearly. Here's a link to the short. Yep. Well, I mean, it says it's angie. In the, in the URL, so I assume that that's the short. I'll have you know I am actually wearing cargo shorts right now, which is, you know, once I finish filling all of these pockets, that short's definitely gonna take off. And fly into space. I just need to put more bottle rockets in these pockets. Speaking of bottle rockets, let's disable this overlay, which has nothing to do with bottle rockets or um, shorts. I'm very on topic this morning. Speaking of on topic, you can now not yet, but in a second you will be able to uh, click a button and that button is going to do a thing. And that thing is it's going to make me in the chat give you a dwarf, if you deserve one. Speaking of deserving a dwarf, many people have been deserving of dwarfs in the past and the people deserving of dwarfs are... <sighs> If you had one and it's dead, I you clearly didn't deserve it enough. Uh, animal, uh, cathode, ray tube, cave, Johnson, Creed, cyan, corp, deep sea fish, and dominoc, elfie, bean, indiridius, jezza, and cashmere, goat, kokoroko, mini, big boss, and napalm. <clears throat> Nodokasa, Salvadaddy the sequel, shadows, bin, absorber, did, and uh, shy, phantasmita, skywell, ugdpy, and ulfsire. Can you have one? No, but would you like one? If you would like one, these are the unnamed ones. Which one would you like? You can't have one. You personally must just select one. It's a very easy job. I'm saying sentences right now. My brain doesn't understand. <sighs> Maybe you swam real good? Uh, no, didn't you rename yourself? I'm pretty damn sure that you renamed yourself. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, no, I know what happened. So you were dead. You were dead. But you dying was the last straw that made me jump back to a save file. But you were still dead. You did, in fact, die. I just undied you because I'm a good person. Uh, so, Nimlark, what dwarf you want? Chief medical one? Okay. Dreams of attaining um, rank in society. I love how my 
YouTube, Twitch is currently giving me a notification saying that I'm trying to stream at a bitrate that's too high. How dare I try and stream at 3,150 bitrate above what it's capable of receiving? How dare I do such a thing? Twitch, you'll be fine. Trust me. Uh, so this particular dwarf is now Nimlark. We're gonna consider him larked. And uh, Nimlark uh, is a dabbling bonk dwarf, as well as just wants to be with family and friends. Fortunately, you have no friends, and you do have family. You're also related to uh, Alien Slayer, who uh, you were the lover of for a while, apparently, and Alien Slayer used to be queen. Has either died or stepped down from that role since, but you at one point were in love with a queen. Uh, he could not care less about his appearance, talents, or other personal vanities, feels strong urges, and seeks short-term rewards, and is very polite. Observes the appropriate rules of decorum when possible, and does not easily hate or develop negative feelses. Uh, he doesn't seek out excitement, is rarely happy or enthusiastic, is conflicted by this as he values parties and merrymaking in the abstract, and he tends to be swayed by emotional appeals and he doesn't handle stress well. He has a noticeable lack of perseverance, and he tends to form only tenuous emotional bonds with others, and he has a sense of duty. He is not particularly interested in what others think of him, and he needs alcohol to get through the working day and doesn't really care about much these days. Uh, a devilish potato would like to give a dwarf to UDK. 450. Do we permit this, chat? Yes or no? Uh, he personally sees war as a useful means to an end. And uh, likes orthoclase, bismuth bronze, sardonyx, and pigtail paper. Uh, the color yellow, bins, and uh, and when possible prefers to consume a yellow bullhead and cherry wine and artichoke hearts. And, you know, art has to choke so many times on hearts. I, I hope art's okay. Uh, and uh, he doesn't, and he absolutely detests brown recluse spiders. And you know what? So do I. They, they bite badly. Um, I had to explain to somebody that no, you did not in fact get bit by a spider. You definitely got bit by a horsefly the other day. Because apparently explaining the difference between a spider bite and a horsefly bite is very difficult. Anyway, I had a, a neighbor a couple weeks ago that was like completely convinced of being, you know, uh, bit by a spider. When I can assure you they didn't. So there's dead things everywhere and we're dumping them because bad things have happened. Don't worry about it too much. It's fine. We're fine. It's all fine. Speaking of fine, um, chat would like to give uh, UDK. UDK, would you like a dwarf with a beard or without a beard? That's the only uh, choice you get to make because chat voted in your favor. They get to actually select what you get. So, what flavor of dwarf would you like? With a beard? Okay. Uh, chat, what kind of job are we giving UDK? Let's see, we've got uh, some metal workers. The mayor is currently available. Uh, we've got um, cooks, spinners, wood burners. It's military dwarf. Well, the mayor does have a beard. child. Well, we do have one, two, three, four kids, and m multiple of them, of them have beards. Is... Well, we see two mayors, three mayors, actually. Sure, we'll go with the mayor. May your name need be satisfied. UDK 450. Never becomes angry after seeing a goblin's dead body. Is prone to hatreds and often develops negative feelings. He likes to take it easy. He's brave in the face of imminent danger. Is quite polite, generally quite confident in his abilities when undertaking specific ventures. He's quite confident, uh, I read that already. He, he has little interest in joking around and he tends to hang on to grievances. He uh, generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity. Is somewhat uncomfortable around those that appear unusual or live differently from himself. He is not particularly interested in what others think of him and becomes very rich and when he's angry and he needs alcohol to get through the working day and does not mind being outdoors at least for you know a few minutes a time allegedly uh, dreams of raising a family and personally views tranquility as one of the highest ideals uh, strongly believes that a peaceful and ordered society without deceit is best and he sees perseverance in the face of adversity bullheaded and flesh 
Uh, he likes garnet steel and crystal opal, tunnel tube wood, rope reed fabric, giant lion tamarind. Gi sorry, not lion tamarind. Giant lion parchment. He ain't even lying about it. Uh, he's just got expensive tastes. Uh, uh, high boots, windows, and pigs for their snorts. I wonder what he feels about Microsoft, though. Uh, he likes the sound of the Zephyr of Glimmers and the sight of the Diamond Silver, and when possible, prefers to consume clown loach and sunberries and bilberry wine and sheep's milk and absolutely hates worms. Might you request a dwarf checkup? So, I'm not saying I have bad news, uh, but uh, Stormwolf no longer with us. Uh, I want to say that you died in the l most recent catastrophe. We've had several. Um, this, for, for as good as this fort is and as fun as this fort has been, we've had a lot of catastrophes made. I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry for your loss, but uh, rip Stormwolf. Also for the dwarves that we just named, which is uh, UDK. Uh, do you have a bedroom? You do. In fact, you have a study, a bedroom, and a dining room. And it is all right here. And you have one of the best, because um, when the river is running, which it's currently not, uh, you, you get uh, a nice mist going past your head. Did your dwarf have any beliefs? Uh, it's not uncommon for dwarves to have none, actually. Yeah, I mean, tranquility is one of the beliefs that a peaceful is ordered to decide to do dreams of uh, raising a family. Uh, you are a member of no religion. You do not believe in religion, but you do worship Dunthor Disembagusht, which I'm pretty sure is the god of murder, but I may be wrong. Um, no friends. You've also been in the fort since 335? And you have no friends. <laughs> which is kind of impressive to me. How did you get elected mayor? Huh. So, the gimmick of this fort is I'm trying to give every single dwarf a bedroom that is, like, boutique and unique to them. Um, we only have four dwarves right now that don't have bedrooms, so we're just going to try and get those done right off the bat. We do have two half-done bedrooms, so we should go finish those and then just build a few more around here. Um, but the other thing that we've been doing with this fort is uh, maybe an irresponsible amount of, like, draining of things, and um, that's what this is. What I'm thinking about doing is this is a giant fountain, right? I have a doorway right here into the fort, which is fine, but wouldn't it be cool if I could just make a bunch of stairs that go all the way down to maybe about here, and then have a little walkway that then go all the way over to here? or something, that then go up and then back around into here. Um, basically making it so that uh, there is a area right here with like a, uh, a another drawbridge going in this way. So we'll let like wagons and stuff come in this side, but what I'm thinking is we just dam off this river kind of permanently. And then whenever an enemy army arrives, we get them to walk down into here, walk through like some walkways in the caverns, and we can just drain the water out into the caverns and then when, when we want to get rid of the enemy, we just drown them uh, in the caverns. Oh, I damned it. <laughs> I got tired of dwarves dying in it, so I damned it. That's that's what happened to the river, is I damned it. Um, and this is kind of a perpetual motion machine because the river is getting pumped out by all these pumps, which then goes this way, which then goes down into here, which then goes off map. And apparently there's pawn grabbers on this side now too. Um, so it go, they then go off map. And then these power this. So it's sort of powering itself. So, um, for those of you who missed it, over the weekend, I, uh, I, I recorded and edited and uploaded another chat with Putnam. Um, so if, if you, for some reason, didn't see that, um, that is up, and you can go listen to it. And if you want the full unedited version without any, like, uh, interjections from yours truly, um, well, with actually more interjections, but with like more uh, side tangents and asides and like experimental discussion, uh, the full audio for that is listed on my um, blog. So you can go listen to that on the blog if you uh, so so desire. Um, I'm just going through an unforbidding jobs right now. Most of what we're doing is disposing of bodies because we had some dwarves die uh, very recently. And then the plan for today is building up bedrooms, trying to get that population higher. And, uh, 
I'm not saying that this is going to become a a warmongery attack me if you dare for it, but it's going too soon. Finally, real science in this channel? I mean, definitely, yes. You just saw the YouTube, uh, a, a YouTube doc about this game. It sounds incredible. Is it the one that is made by Noclip and has Tarn talking about cats for a bit? It's nice to know people are still watching that. They're making a second one, which I recorded a bunch of footage for, which isn't out yet. I should email them and be, ask if they need more footage. Uh, Lanix, thank you very much for checking out a gift. Appreciate you. A second person on that gift sub leaderboard. So there is kind of a side rule for this fort, which is I can only expand the population when every dwarf is named. So I'm thinking we're just going to add some fun side asides to today. If you gift a subscription, you get to name a dwarf. That's the, the open rule for today. No holes barred. And for YouTube chat, if you gift a membership, you get to name a dwarf. No holes barred. Until... Every dwarf in the fort is named. Are some of your, are your favorite pieces of dwarf fort content out there? Some of my favorite stuff that I make, too. So we're getting some uh, pathing lag here. Which is mildly concerning. I'm sure it'll fix itself. How's it going? Um, Time keeps on... Uh, going, going, going. Spinning, spinning, spinning. Something like that. Why is there a dead body... Oh, in this bed. Okay, so <laughs> why is there a dead body in this bedroom? Uh, it's it's big. And also, also, what what? Cyan Corp, why do you have clothes everywhere? Cyan Corp really likes just leaving clothing everywhere, leaving things strewn about without a care. Indeed, jeez. Let's get these bedrooms done. You'll take a bearded dwarf, named what? Are we naming it Lanix, or are we naming it something else? Lanix. Lanix, please cat. How about a herbalist? Lanix. Is satisfied at work and remembers dining in a fantastic dining room and was delighted remembering putting on an exceptional item. Uh, Lanix is completely wrapped up in his own appearance, abilities, and other personal matters. Very rarely develops negative feelings towards things and doesn't generally think before acting. He feels best when everyone gets along without any strife or contention and has a sense of duty. Often feels nervous and doesn't mind wearing something special now and again. He feels often feels lustful and he likes to brawl. He is somewhat fearful in the face of imminent danger and his voice trails off. He needs alcohol to get through the working day, and is a hardened individual. Dreams of creating a great work of art, and personally, uh, finds eloquence and artful speech off-putting, uh, finds friendship burdensome, and finds maintaining decorum a silly and obviously fumbling waste of time. He sees Guylan Cunning as indirect and somewhat worthless, and he likes nickel, silver, daysight, and lapis lazuli, mango wood, and giant hamster leather, reindeer, antler, and crescents, and short swords, and reindeer for their large herds. Moon snail men for their predatory nature, and the, and the pomegranate and pomegranate trees for their fruit, and when possible, prefers to consume giant nautilus, prickleberry wine, and absolutely hates leeches. You probably also uh, enjoy uh, eating um, pomegranates for the activity. Uh, he has a very long beard, which is neatly combed. Doesn't look that long, but you remember the West Sect, which is a religion. Uh, you arrived here on uh, this year, so you haven't been here that long, and you're already kind of pissed. Do you have a bedroom? You do not have a bedroom. Well, we need to get you a bedroom. That's why you're upset get that sorted so yeah that's something i'm gonna do for this fort today is uh if if you want to name a dwarf literally anything with no real questions um uh, within reason obviously uh we'll we'll do that but the first thing i got to do is just wait a little bit aside from building those bedrooms and the reason we got to just wait for a little bit is because i turns out have a lot of body parts to dump so we're working on that in the background Morph was running around yelling West Sect to represent. I mean, I suppose. This is a... You know what? Actually, I'm gonna... 
put this dwarf's bedroom upstairs because this is a pathetically small bedroom already. I don't feel the need to also make you a pathetically small office inside of that pathetically small bedroom. Because I feel like that's rude. Thought it was asking. So um, if you've just seen that one video, uh, I hate to break it to you, it's been a while. Uh, so Dwarf Fortress is out on Steam now, and uh, the paid version includes a built-in graphics pack, though, and the whole UI has changed since you uh, saw that bit. But it still is the same game. Um, under the hood, it's still the same code. It's still the same game. It still has the ASCII stuff if you want to play it that way. Um, but uh, I like having a, a live stream that succeeds, and turns out a lot of people still don't fully understand the ASCII. So apparently I have a giant rat, a bunch of giant rats even, and a goblin in that cage, which is fun. And now the game is frozen. Speaking of this game being huge, I mean, something is probably stuck somewhere, if I had to bet. But there's nothing getting killed. Is there any mass job canceling? I am inaccessible. Oh, that's probably why. Yeah, that's probably why. Um, let's just go down to here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my God. Well, I've been looking for that for the last however many hours I've played this save. Um, I've been looking for metal and we just found metal chat. I knew it existed. We can actually start making weapons. That is massive. I'm very excited, all of a sudden. All right, well, most of this stuff has been forbidden. So now that I'm over here, right, this, this stuff, we're gonna need to dig into this. Actually, we can just dig into this, up here. This will be much safer. Okay, so because I'm pushing this. Hmm. I was gonna say, where are my forges? I want to, well, where, where's the majority of my forges? The majority of my forges are right here. So I could put a forge area down here. Let's do that. So I've got an area right here to dig out. We're gonna put some charcoal powered and coal powered because we also have a lot of coal forges down here. And right on the edge here is gonna be a way down, and a way down, and a way down, and a way down. Oh, actually, no, I'm gonna go directly into an aquifer if I go this way. Cause, oh, uh, actually, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, let's try this again. Way down, way down, way down, way down, way down. And way down, way down, way down, way down. Okay, so where am I headed exactly? I need to find that area again, it's right here. There's aquifer, interesting. Okay, so we're gonna go to right here. 
And this is going to both be an entryway and a minecart route. Mostly a minecart route. Because I currently don't have anywhere to install a stockpile otherwise. So now we just need to hope that I don't hit too many aquifers because it looks like there's aquifers like everywhere right here. It's just an obtuse uh, trying, uh, it's just obtuse trying to get a problem done that you're, uh, basically Dwarf Fortress isn't a hard game and anybody who represents it as a hard game probably hasn't played very much of it in reality. Um, because so many people describe it as a hard game, people parrot the fact that it's hard and that becomes a selling point for the game. But calling this game hard in and of itself is kind of misrepresenting it. It's just a game that takes a while to learn because its mechanics are very unique and odd. It's just deep? Sure. I mean, it can be pretty hard if you fall down a deep thing and then land on your head, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. I mean, you could. It's just probably not wise. I'm still getting that, those, them lag spikes. Hold on, let me check something. I'm gonna hack something for a second here. Because uh, I have a theory. I think my theory is correct. I realized I just exterminated the Batman, but I'm curious if that fixes my frame rate. Yes, it did. Okay, so I need to nerf the cavern critters. Otherwise, we're going to have frame rate problems. Which turns out I do that basically every fort now. Yeah, it's set to default. So let's do, because it's like attack one, 10, attack two, or, or, or sorry, att attack one, uh, I didn't get monsters. Okay, so that's what I need. I, I don't need regulars. I need monsters, invasion cap monsters, 40. Let's do five. Oh wait, no, see, hold on. I, I'm completely mis misreading this. So let's say 10. This is the wrong section that I'm editing. Let's just go do, delete all these. Okay, so this is the one that I need to be editing. Cavern Dweller Scale, that's the one. So three and five. So I don't completely get completely wrecked. I literally just asked Putnam about this. Yep, mm hmm And it's something I will continue asking Putnam about until it's changed or fixed, alternatively. Okay, so how many dwarves are still dumping item? Several. Why is this track stop forbidden? So I just got back to Oklahoma from uh, Des Moines and uh, I had a bad rush from the bedding, a bad rash from the bedding there. You're not used to fabric softener since uh, you're a literal baby and you think that you're allergic. Oh no. I um, honestly, Huh. Apparently we lost. Oh, well that explains why my garbage disposal isn't working. I'd lost the minecart for there somehow. I wonder if they were like going to go put it elsewhere. Well, that's bizarre. Genuinely bizarre. Genuinely bizarre. Okay. Is this stuff still getting...
X base you create, you need to just go ham on rail cars so you can figure it out. They're pretty easy. The the Forgotten Beast uh, Zulash has come. A three eyed lizard. It has a broad shell and it is slavering. A huge three eyed lizard. Uh, it has its black scales are round and close set. Beware its noxious secretions. I'm slightly terrified. Very much slightly terrified. Uh, have you killed anything? Nope. How's my military not like looking currently? Eh, not great. Not great indeed. Oh wait, hold on. Okay, it's on the lower layer. Let's just follow it, see where it goes. Cream with silver in it. I, yeah, no idea. So this creature is on a layer that I used to have access to. I don't think we currently have access to it. Let's just double check. Not sure if this is currently connected to a locked area. Yes, it is. Okay, so we don't currently have access to it. So it shouldn't be able to get in. Keyword is shouldn't. <laughs> But, you know, stranger things have happened. Okay, so let's just... Jump up to this area. I have not yet started digging down. I think that a lot of the perceived difficulty of Dwarf Fortress, and I've talked about this a billion times, a lot of the perceived difficulty of Dwarf Fortress is purely because the game was ASCII, which is strange and scary to some people. Which, like, okay, I get it. But at the same time, it's no longer ASCII, and people still say that about it. And it's, as somebody who's played this game for a very long time, I hate to break it to you, but that's mostly false information. It's mostly false information if not largely false information. Having no mouse support was worse? Yeah, or having to like manually enable mouse support, which is just the reality. Okay, so what I'm trying to do right now, my number one priority is fixing moods because we lost a lot of moods during the last siege, which was real bad. Um, and now it's just kind of a matter of like trying to recover a lot of these moods. Like dwarves like Ulfsire, this dwarf is brutally messed up now. And um, I kind of need to try and fix it. I mean, when was the last... Yeah, you, you saw somebody's dead body, right? Like, that's never going to be good for the old brain. Does this game ever go on sale? It's had 10% and 20% off sales before. Yeah. But it's technically free. I mean, you can still download it from their website for free. But it's one of those games where if money isn't the problem and you're just waiting for a sale, like, you'll get the time out of this game if you're interested in it. That's generally not a problem, getting the time out. The, the, a valid amount of time out of it. It only becomes like an issue when... It only really starts becoming an issue when... Um, if it's something that you're not fully sold on. Also, I think you can get us this tiny-ass discount if you already own RimWorld right now. I think that's still going on. It's like 5%, though. Yeah, they had a 20% sale recently. But most of the sales are 10%. Apparently, I've got two minecarts. Well, that's strange. It told me there wasn't a minecart on this route. Now, suddenly, there's a minecart on this route. Uh, we've got a strange mood that's happening, which is Phycod. That's interesting. We're going to get a metal artifact, probably. Do YouTube memberships skip ads on streams like Twitch? Nope, which I think makes them a horrible ripoff. In case you want cut gems, stacked leather, stacked cloth, a quarry, forest, shining bars of metal, forest, stacked cloth, cut gems, okay. Do I have any cut gems? 
Ah, no, I don't. That'll do it. Wait, no, I do. Right there. Okay, so we do have cut gems. Wait, are those large gems? Nope. Those are gems. Okay, so it's not gems that you want. Am I out of wood? Ooh, looks like we're out of wood. Yep. We are out of wood. Well, that's the wrong tool. Because you have both? I think you can still see them if you have both, because I can see them. Let's double check. There's a bunch of different bundles right now. Uh, there's the Best Patch Notes bundle, which is the Caves of Cud Dwarf Fortress bundle. There's the Rimworld Dwarf Fortress bundle. And then there's the Procedural Peril bundle, which is Crypt of the Necromancer, Don't Starve Together, and Dwarf Fortress. Does anybody buy bundles of games on Steam? Because I don't think I ever actually have, with the exception of the very, 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 very early bundles, such as, like, it's all of Valve's games bundle. Also, man, a new Dwarves of Trithius patch, and that game keeps looking better. I'll have to put that on my to-do list for next week. Sit here until you move, dwarf. You bought DLC bundles before? That makes sense. That makes sense. Always best to check uh, with MD as opposed to chat MD. I, wait, are we talking? Did, did somebody talk about, like, having... Oh, okay, so you guys are still talking about the cream. Got it. Okay, I was wondering why we were talking about doctors. You do have the prices right? Fair. I find that, like, the deals are never quite good enough on Steam bundles for it to be worth it. With the exception of those Valve bundles, right? Like, I bought all of Valve's games, I want to say, for, like, a dollar at some point. Is anybody felling trees? Do I have a woodcutter? <laughs> That's the next logical question. Yes, I do. Dominoc is a woodcutter. However, Lanix is now also a woodcutter, and so is, uh, I don't know, Yuvesh. Let's see if anybody's felling a tree. Wait, actually, can they even go upstairs? <laughs> well, that answers that. Look at me in my crappy burrows. Like, why can't they go upstairs? Well, turns out the burrow is strong with this one. Hello, Rolf, how are you? Unless you're trying to turn your skin into a lovely gray-blue color. Um, ew, that's, that's all I have to say to that. While dumping items, makes sense. Just stop dumping everything and let them put this stuff away normally. I really hope I don't hit an aquifer, but, you know, if I do, the world won't end.
<laughs> need some more woodcutters in a migrant wave confirmed. I mean, when do we not need woodcutters? Let's 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 be real here. Hmm. Well, we'll get to it eventually. Got this stuff getting placed. Let's place two bedrooms in here. Dish mab, wood burner. And then since this layer is now accessible, I'm gonna do this. These will be for offices. If something can go wrong, there's no way you don't hit that aquifer. I mean, you're not wrong. I also have to point out the fact that these woodcutters are really lazy. <laughs> Lanix, congratulations. You now are a majority woodcutter person. In fact, you even have an axe equipped. So go eat some food, Mr. Worried, and then go place it somewhere. You know, almost a baby time. My eyes make it impossible for me to ever want to shoot a bow because my right eye doesn't work and I'm right-handed, so I have to aim with my right eye if I shoot a bow in a way that's comfortable. Otherwise, I in theory would have to um like use a left-handed bow as a right-handed person and it made it was enough that I never wanted to go do archery again. Radbug, thanks for the 8th month. It's good to have you. Imagine DF accounted for left-handed dwarfs. I'm dwarves are ambidextrous, aren't they? Based on adventure mode, I'm pretty sure dwarves are just ambidextrous. They don't care. You've got uh, shads and shads in your cistern. Shads? Shads. What's a shad? <laughs> Is that like a Chad? Are they singing Nickelback? If they're singing Nickelback, then there is a very slight high chance that they may or may not be Chads and not in fact Shads. Also, thanks for the new signups. I've gotten a, a couple new newsletter signups in the last little bit. Cute fish. Ah, well, I mean, if they're vermin, you'll never get rid of them. Because they are just spawning on that layer in any water source, it sounds like. It also means that if it's like a well or something, you can actually use it to fish in. I always find that very amusing. Let's see what else you grab, dwarf. We got pigtail cloth. The pathing in this fort is kind of fucked. <laughs> But yeah, I'm pretty sure dwarves are just um, ambidirect dexterous. Like, mostly certain of this. It appears that moods are getting better, unless I'm just not paying that. Actually, no, I think they just got slightly worse. Then they got slightly better. Well, okay. Some better, some worse. You can fish from wells? Yep, you just have to tell them it's a fishing zone. Although the water has to be one layer behind, underneath it instead of like multiple layers down. So if it's a really deep well, you probably won't be able to make it work. Okay, it seems like that dwarf's got everything they need now. Logs are coming in. Let's see how that uh, tunnel I'm digging is doing. Uh, bad, it seems. Oh, huh. I'm like turning up the priority and I keep forgetting that I have um, one of these.
I'm in a head break. Yeah, if it's if the water doesn't match the if the water isn't like on surface level and the bucket has to go down a few layers, then yeah, it won't work. Save the game. Well, okay. Your oldest daughter flipped the baby carriage today. Oh, is that like the baby equivalent of flipping a table? She looked kind of shell-shocked on the edge of tears, and when I flipped the carriage back up, the youngest was just laughing hysterically, and she didn't get scared. Well, that's good. I, you are not mistaken. I am, in fact, in the nap. Darius. This is the truth. Yeah, shorts are really weird on YouTube. They perform horribly for the first 24 hours, and then they randomly get like 5,000 views, and then YouTube forgets they exist. And then I upload them at slightly different times, and then sometimes they just get views right away, and then YouTube forgets they exist. And then sometimes, for like no real discernible reason, they get an extraordinarily large amount of views versus everything else, and then YouTube forgets they exist again. It's like very strange to me. Like very, very strange. Also, as a reminder for today, if you gift a subscription in the chat, uh, you just get a dwarf or the ability to name a dwarf either after you or somebody else. The reason I'm doing that today is because part of the goal for this fort is I can't increase the population until every dwarf is named and every dwarf has a bedroom. So every dwarf has a bedroom, but we need dwarves named. So, just saying, tier twos, abuse your ability to gift subs, uh, or not subs, uh, 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 dwarfs out to people. And to anybody else, if you gift a sub or a YouTube member respectively, you just get to name a dwarf. We're just doing that today. I'm selling dwarves today. That's 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 the kind of dev level of de devil of desperation. Level of desperation I'm at. Dwarf you, Darius. Uh, that would be your sequel dwarf, right? Yes, because the other one died. Chat, do we give uh, Darius a secondary dwarf? So Darius the second. D Darius edition. Uh, I love how you uh, con construct forts. Uh, by the way, aside from watching your videos of community forts, do you have any tips? Blah, 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 blah. Sorry, hold on. I'm trying to read a thing. How dare you give me money? Um, do you have any tips on? In ah, eh, God. <laughs> Proving your stacks because your forts are too normal. Uh, every time you make a square, remove the corners. That or build in caverns and operate within the allowed space. Those are my, my two uh, those are my two tips. Uh, Corvius, thank you very much for the uh, five pack of gift Roonies. What am I naming a dwarf? Forgot the H, Kashmir. Uh, and uh, to the rest of chat, because it seems like I'm giving Darius Darius two. Dwarfko woo. Uh, Darius, uh, would you like a beard or no? Yes or no? You want to be resurrected? We can do that. It's better than being sedated. But, you know, I want to be sedated. Beard matches you? Chat, how's this? Does does Is this a fitting reincarnation for Darius? It is intended, yes. Because it's just showing the most recent major update. It'll catch up eventually, Darius. <laughs> Won't take too long. All right. Uh, Dar Darius Cardrin. Two. Huh. <sighs> He very easily falls into love and develops positive feelings, and he is not driven and rarely feels the need to pursue even a modest success. He finds helping others to be emotionally rewarding, and he has a noticeable lack of perseverance. He has a tendency to go towards feeling deep and emotional bonds with others. He has a calm demeanor, and he is somewhat quarrelsome. 
He tends to be bullied by this since he values friendship. Uh, he has he is a little tight with resources when working on projects because he can't carry anything because he's a baby. He need he has a tendency to consider ideas and abstractions of a practical application because he doesn't know what practicality is because he's a baby. He does not easily hate or develop negative feelings because he's a baby. Although I think all babies develop negative feelings. Uh, he is grateful when others help him out and he tries to return favors in uh, incompetently because he's a baby. He can handle stress. He doesn't know what it is because he's a baby and he occasionally overindulges. And the worst stress he's ever experienced is being slightly far away from mommy once for a bit. Uh, he often g greets others with a hug mostly mum because that's his only friend and he needs alcohol to get through the working day. Uh, he dreams of crafting a masterwork someday and personally he is greatly disturbed by quiet and a peaceful existence so he cries all the time because he's a baby and he finds artwork boring because he's a baby. Uh, he likes Rilgar, Electrum, and Gold Opal Pigtail Fabric in the color Sepia. Spears, earrings, and splints, and blue pea fowls for their enormous fan tails, and the sound of the Zephyr of Glimmers and sight of the Umber Skirt, and when possible, prefers to consume Demon Rat, because he doesn't know, but he doesn't know what it is, and a giant two-humped camel cheese. Specifically. Uh, prickleberry wine and bitter vetch vines. If he doesn't have these in that order, he cries, and absolutely hates snakes. Like my neighbor. And, uh... It, it, he's, he's a member of the Still Mirrors and doesn't follow any religions. And the Cyanide, could I give you the Metal Crafter me, please? I swear it's not just an artifact wanting waiting on cooldown. I mean, okay. Well, Metal Crafter. Cyanide KZK uh, is an adequate swords dwarf, is a member of the military, is satisfied after making an artifact, has satisfied a bunch of needs, somehow still isn't focused, but feels best when everyone gets along without any strife or contention, has great trouble mastering feel when confronted by danger, has a calm demeanor and occasionally overindulges, is moved by art and natural beauty and is conflicted by this for more than one reason, he often feels lustful and he takes, he likes to take it easy and he has a tendency to consider ideas and abstractions of practical applications and he takes a deep breath whenever he's surprised. He needs alcohol to go up through the working day and doesn't really care about anything anymore. Dreams of raising a family and personally finds the very idea of competition obscene. Thanks Cashmere for two bucks. Zero at Cheers. X200. Hype minecart opportunity? Uh, no. No, uh, there was five gu su five gubs? Hmm. Five subs gifted four minutes ago and, uh, nothing for the last 20 minutes outside of that. It was just Radbugs resub nine minutes, uh, sorry, 15 minutes ago. So, uh, no, it's not an opportunity. In fact, it timed out right now. Okay. Um, he is disgusted by merrymakers and finds artwork boring and does not really see the point of working hard. Same, man. Same. But thanks for the two bucks, Cashmere. Uh, he dreams of raising a family and uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, likes native platinum, platinum and red spinel and bonobo leather and icahedra shields and querns and earrings and ballista arrows and when possible prefers to consume giant crab, vote crab and uh, finger millet beer and parsnip seeds and hates oysters. Seemed like just a moment ago. Nope, it's a five minute window. <laughs> well then um okay so this this dwarf right here is uh running around picking up equipment and just made an artifact so we should look at the artifact which is a set of e thin earrings i'll craft our ship is of the highest quality it is um he offers it to the big fall okay uh it, it, it is decorated with chestnut sheep's wool and feather wood and encircled with bands of pigtail brillet cut white Chalistonis, and this object menaces with spikes of reindeer leather. And shirt on the item is an image of Forgotten Beast in tin. And uh, I'm going to give that to... Can I give it to the manager? Let's give it to the manager. It's Limul. There it is. Thank you, chat. Sorry about the sneezing kind of snuck up on me. Apparently I need to make high boots. I don't have any materials I can make boots with just yet. I guess I can make leather high boots. I'm gonna follow this dwarf digging through the wall. 
because I want to see if this hits an aquifer or not. You just dug too deep and uh, lost your whole fortress in three seconds. That does sound fun. And the thing is, there's very little satisfaction in this video game that quite matches the feeling of, oh, I actually defeated hell this time. <laughs> so, you know, maybe just worth noting. There's few, very few feelings that are that satisfying. I don't know if this goes over top of them, but we'll try it. Because I seem to have this problem of aquifer, but it looks like it's not here on this upper level, so. Cavern from the humans has arrived to trade, or from the dwarves have arrived to trade, actually. Caravan from the dwarves have arrived to trade. Um, you're powered. I can actually fill you up again. Got a lot of clothing to sell. Especially because I recently had a bunch of dwarves die, so there's just, like, clothing sitting out. And let's also go into here and go choir. Sheet. Actually, let's just type in copy. Mm, yeah. Cavern, that is what I said, yes. That is, in fact, exactly what I said. Also, hey, Son, 7C. What's up? Hello. This weird feeling that these are going to all become contraband in a moment, but they're not right now, and I don't think they have been yet, so... I'm just going to sell as many of these boots as I bloody well can. What do I prefer, classic or premium? Which one am I playing? It's they're the same game, mate. <laughs> like quite literally, they're they're literally the same game. So I don't really know what you're looking for with that question. Are you asking do I like ASCII? Of course I do, because I learned how to play this game on ASCII. If you're asking what do I prefer. Uh, the free version or the paid version? Well, I use the paid version because, like, why wouldn't I? Um, what do I prefer? Well, I stream what people will watch, and this might be a shock to you, and I know people will be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. people um, are, were scared of ASCII back in the day and are still scared of ASCII now, so people don't really tune into streams when there's just ASCII on the screen, so 
I do the thing that the audience likes. So at the end of the day, it literally does not fucking matter what I like. <laughs> it's what the audience will watch. That's the only thing that matters. Got so much random clothing to bring get rid of. Let's go tunics. Some migrants have arrived as well. Let's see what we get. Mechanic and a stone worker. What? Oh. <laughs> Gates shut. Will they acquire an object while transferring it to the trade depot? Nope, because that's not a stockpile. So they cannot, in fact, uh, acquire objects while moving them to a stockpile. You know, actually, I'm just going to do these real quick. I'm just going to deconstruct these and put statues in their places. Statues work better than these. And also, I'm going to delete this temporarily. Um, I mean, I disagree with that because the UI is literally the same. So learning the UI in ASCII is almost identical to learning the UI without ASCII because there's no real difference. It's just a matter of playing slowly. It just forces you to play slowly. So saying something is abjectly painful and unnecessary torture is implying a lot of your own biases and preferences. Remember how a second ago I said the audience doesn't tune in if somebody plays ASCII? Well, you just identified yourself as one of those people, meaning... Well, I do love ASCII. No, I can't, and I'm not going to. Suited. Um, and while I do like the ASCII modes, um, that attitude is why I don't use it. It's the same reason I don't use the UI that I prefer for Caves of Cut, is that attitude. The kind of overwhelming, pointless negativity that just brings the mood down and doesn't positively benefit anybody. Yep. Uh, so the short version suited is, no, I won't bring it back, but what I will do is when people ask me to show something in ASCII, I do, because that's easier. It's sometimes, honestly, easier to just do a thing that people ask occasionally when they ask and, like, not lock it behind an arbitrary points wall. Yes, sure, absolutely, but calling it an afterthought is just blatantly wrong. You, you're saying that something isn't an afterthought because it's slightly lower priority than things that are higher priority. That doesn't automatically make it an afterthought. This is a game that develops slowly. It's all about your choice of words, mate. Yep, I, I, I also do as well, Suited Giraffe. I would say that the graphics are an afterthought because there's more missing graphics for the graphical version than the ASCII version. Like, I, literally, there is more missing sprites and issues with the graphical version than there is with the ASCII version. Like, as an example, there's no ass assets for the this river except for the areas that I've been building on, right? If I go to ASCII, there is a correctly colored texture for it. That is dirt. Is it afterthought? Really? Really no. All right. Cool. Got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. I, I think that the, the best use for ASCII for people who are not used to playing in ASCII is probably just play 
on normal graphics, like with the graphics on. And then whenever you're feeling like seeing a different perspective, swap over to ASCII and have a look at it. I think that you need to realize, son, that I don't have the ability to do things that I enjoy because this is my job. And unfortunately, when it's your job, it doesn't matter if you enjoy something, you have to do what the audience wants. And because of lovely amounts of overwhelming negativity from the audience, when I play things that I want to play, I've just learned that it's not worth it most of the time, and I just do what I have to do. That's all. You know, I, I streamed only in ASCII for years. Like, this, this stream was a, like, ASCII Dwarf Fortress stream for a very long time. And I was burnt out and tired of hearing people saying, why are you playing this in ASCII? Nobody wants to watch this. This is awful. Why are you so dumb, streamer? Streamer, play get better video games. Streamer, have you thought about playing this game with a tile set? I've heard that enough times. Of course it's chat's fault. Why would I put any legitimate blame on myself when I could blame somebody else and deflect? It's the only logical response to criticism, naturally. It's deflection. <laughs> you know, because all negative criticism is trolls, and all trolls must be ignored and can't be fed. So congratulations, chat. You guys are all starving to death because I ain't feeding you. I also wouldn't to begin with because that would require me paying your grocery bills, and paying my own is enough. Like some horse tallow biscuits? Hmm. I don't know. You're going to have to go to... Uh, I, I'm trying to think of like a brand name to, that might do that. <coughs> uh, if you subscribe three months in a row, I will provide you definitely, absolutely, yes, with a 99 cent instant noodles cup. Will that do her? Will, will that, will that st hold you over? I need to sneeze again, chat. God. He's talking about YouTube chat. We're fine. Oh, true. Uh, yep. Hey, YouTube chat. I love you. Sorry for making you the bread of the jokes all the time. Definitely YouTube chat. It's definitely got nothing to do with the, the, the fact that, like, I only started streaming on YouTube, like, last year. And I've never streamed ASCII Dwarf Fortress on YouTube. It's definitely got nothing to do with that fact. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Sneeze noxious secretions? Not really noxious. Are you telling me to sneeze the day, though? Is that what this is? This is going to be a pain in the ass to drain. But it'll be okay. So they're gonna go down here, connect with this.
Oops, nope, I need downs, not ups. All right, let's let them dig that shit. We'll figure it out from there. And then this bottom area is going to drain out into the caverns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a line of floors along here. And this center thing is just gonna do this. Some forgotten beast named Azok Karothslol uh, Umathibi has come. Uh, a skinless seropod. It has a pair of squat antennae and it is ravening. Its eyes glow golden yellow. Beware its deadly dust. Um, I need to check that in a second. But first... Just making this look nice. Um, forgotten beast, hey? Okay, well, it can get to me. The bad whisper, hey? Kind of just want to lock the door, but also I kind of want to try and kill it. So let's get this squad. I think they can just train right there. And then get this squad to go stand here. This needs to have them set as training. All my squads become swords dwarfs and marks dwarves. Oh, I've got a bunch. I should probably train these giant rats, actually. So we can eat those. Turns out their network cable is broken. Oh, lovely. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. Let me just check something real quick. I will buy that sterling silver. There's too much weight in here, so I have to buy some weight from them. Turns out if you buy the clay, it costs nothing and is super heavy. What animals do they have? They have a donkey and a llama. I'm gonna grab the donkey because it's cheap and that'll get me under the weight limit. Milk, milk, beer, syrup, syrup, syrup wine. We'll buy the barrels. I will buy the extra shields. foodstuffs, can buy the book, or the scrolls, rather, a limestone jug, and I'll buy the cheese, because I'm lazy and haven't been making cheese. I don't have a command command. It's pretty limited, really, like, the commands that you need to know are the ones that are listed. If they're not listed, they're not super relevant, generally. giving them tons of profit, but that's fine. All right, so I'm a little bit disturbed about this Forgotten Beast. I'm going to go use the toilet real quick and top off my water, which is why I need to use the toilet, and then we'll fight this thing. Cheese for everyone! Let's 
Let's take a lovely fruit, a tomato. Remove everything that's good from it, the seeds, the vitamins, the, the nutrients, everything that's good about it, and just jam it full of shit garbage shit sugar and put it in a shit bottle that sounds like shit when you put it on your shit. It's shit! Stop eating ketchup! <laughs> there we go. Oh, and as soon as I sit back down, the ads start. Well, you fucking donkey! What he said. Um, I think cult culturally calling an entire culture's can culture rude is probably in relatively poor taste, but I'm not going to take the opportunity to disagree with you too much. T. L. Gray, hot. Hot? Hmm. Um, I, I, depending on the people that you interact with, there certainly can be some rudeness in any culture. And I've definitely run into rude individuals who also happen to be very French. Uh oh. Well, that sucks. Did I not have a door on this? Oh, I had a drawbridge. Right. Well, it's in the fort now, and I don't think there's much I can do, actually. Where does this go exactly? Hmm. This is what happens when I build a bunch of tunnels and then don't play Dwarf Fortress for a few days. Well, it appears that the dwarves are fighting with it. Um, down in the lower levels, actually. So let's actually just send both these squads down here because there were some others in the, in the auxiliary uh, training station. So they're already fighting with it. So it's Yuvesh and... Uh, Nest them here. And uh, one of them is just stabbing it repeatedly with a short sword, which is actually doing quite a bit of damage. The creature itself uh, is bleeding heavily. And uh, the swords dwarf slashes the forgotten beast in the front left foot with the steel short sword, tearing the fat. Also stabs it in the left rear leg. Uh, as for its injuries, if I take a peek, well, that's a dwarf, not a, not the beast. The, it's, it's missing an, an antenna, uh, which means its FM signal is going to be real bad now. Uh, it probably can still get AM, though, so I guess that's good. I wouldn't want to completely remove a, a beast from its ability to do such things. Uh, its, its guts have been spilled, uh, probably by this one of these dwarves. Uh, it, it, there you go. The sword dwarf scratches a forgotten beast in the lower body, tearing apart the muscle and spilling the guts. Uh, the dwarf says, uh, I have improved my fighting, and that was not satisfying. Um, terrified while in conflict, but satisfied while improving fighting. Uh, same with Mistum, also improving fight him, fighting. They're both competent. Uh, the creature is winded and faint and bleeding heavily and shaken to its core, and it's probably not going to be able to do much more, and it did, in fact, not do anything more. And the creature is now dead. Rest in peace, you forgotten beast. I mean, I would argue that one of the biggest waste of money subscriptions you could possibly get is Sirius XM. So... Let's see if I can butcher it. Who got the kill? I mean, it was one of the two. Kashmir zero, it cheered. X one thousand, agree. In the front leg with her bismuth bronze sword fracturing the bone, whereas the bone carver did what? Uh, Ligam has been torn, stabs it in the right rear foot. It could have been either of them. But, uh, let me check. Missed them. Uh, 
I think it was Yuvesh. Yep. Yuvesh got it. It's their second notable kill. Do you really not know what Sirius XM is? It's um, satellite radio. Did you get a dwarf for the gift subs? Uh, I don't believe I saw your preference, but uh, of beard or no beard, but I can absolutely give you the dwarf that you deserve, friend. Um, and uh, 13 Molin would like you to post beers. And uh, Kashmir, thanks for the 10 bucks. Also, Kashmir, you can also name a dwarf for the kindness of $10. So which dwarf would you like bestowed upon if your faith is Corbius? Do you have any preference whatsoever or should we just give you somebody random, Corbius? No preference around beard, uh, but is a paper maker available? Nope. And there's no book binders either. Please assign anyone that is not subscribed. First not subscribed person to say blah gets a dwarf. Oh, uh, how's this super happy stone cutter look to you, Cordius? Uh, Ka Kyle Peoplesvo uh, gets 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 a dwarf. Um, what kind? Of, would you like a beard or no beard, Kyle? Uh, and uh, Corvinus, S U E D E. Corvinus Swede uh, is shameless, unfazed by the thoughts of others. Can be very happy and optimistic. Is very quick to anger and uh, dislikes obligations. Will try to avoid being bound by them. Though he's conflicted by this for more than one reason. Has a strong tendency towards privacy, and uh, he often he feels best when everyone gets along without any strife or contention. He has an active sense of humor. Can sometimes act without deliberation. Begins speaking in monotone whenever he is angered, and he often snaps his fingers when he's nervous. He needs alcohol to get through the working day. Does not mind being outdoors at least for a time. And he dreams of creating a great work of art and personally finds himself somewhat disgusted with eloquent, eloquent speakers, sees those that attempt to maintain dignified and proper behavior as vain and offensive, and doesn't care if others take the time to master skills, and doesn't really value merrymaking. Beard, K. Okay. Gotcha. Chat, what kind of job should we give them? Unless, uh, unless they have any preference. But uh, hold on, I was just responding to a message. So, doesn't care if others take the time to master skills and doesn't really see the value in merrymaking and, uh, and dreams of creating a great work of art uh, like slate, black bronze, purple spinel, and suns. Uh, plural. The two humped camels for their humps and the, uh, and the words of the lark of cavor caverning and the sight of the umber skirt and when possible prefers to consume wheat, axitol, and shad and... Rat wheat and um, guava wine and soft wheat flour and absolutely hates lizards. With a person that named Giraffe uh, knows that much about <laughs> head in the sky, yeah, far, is long, just long enough neck that he can see satellites.
I'm just responding to text messages right now, which are time sensitive, so I have to respond to them. And then we'll get the other one named. Um, so this one is now up. So the next one will be Kyle with a beard. Actually, do you have any family dwarf? You don't, but you do have a friend. And uh, Mistum the Bone Carver is a passing acquaintance. So why don't we go with that? Let's go with a friend of that last dwarf. So this dwarf who's currently cleaning himself up, who just saw the Forgotten Beast die, this is going to be Kyle People SVO. Kyle, uh, over here, uh, accepts favors without developing a sense of obligation, preferring to act as the current situation demands. He has great trouble mastering fear when confronted by danger, and he finds helping others to be emotionally rewarding. Often feels discouraged and does not think before acting. He does not have a great aesthetic sensitivity, and he is conflicted by this. He values parties and its creation. Uh, as he varies, uh, as he values artwork and its creation. There we go. Uh, he is often cheerful and isn't particularly curious about the world, and he tries to keep his things orderly. He tends to share his own experiences and thoughts with others, and his voice trails off when he's thinking about something, and he needs alcohol to get through the working day and doesn't really care about anything anymore. Dreams of creating a great work of art and personally views, tran values tra views tranquility as one of the highest ideals, uh, really respects commerce and uh, those that engage in commerce, and values sacrifice and does not care about fairness. Uh, and you are friends with Napalm. Another fort. Member of the past sect. Um, let's actually just fly down to the caverns real quick, because I need to assign some things and then build a thing. I need to put a wall piece right here, because that doesn't need to be there. That's just a liability. That. And then the other thing I need to do is I need to reassign this into the burrow. So chat room, is there any games coming out soon that you guys are looking forward to? Because my next blog post uh, on my blog is going to be the monthly post, which is probably going to end up having a big, like, being one of the things that I lock behind a paywall. It'll be underneath all tiers, so probably starting at like two bucks a month or something super cheap like that. Um, but I'm going to be making the keeping the first one free, probably. Or free on a preview, I'm not sure. Um, because I haven't decided exactly when I'm going to launch and make people pay for portions of the blog, but um, the current thing with the blog is everything's free, and I'm kind of treating it like a ongoing trial for right now, but once it's out proper, some portions of it are going to cost money. And essentially, my, my goal is to make it into a, like, these are all of the games... Um, I'm just responding to that text. All right. COD 1.0 and Avowed. I'm really curious about how Avowed does. Like, really curious. Because that game looks cheap. But I think that's a good thing because I think more ga we need more cheap games. Like we need we, we need more games made on a reasonable fucking budget and less games made on an unreasonably ris ridiculous fucking budget. Like I actively think that's a good thing and something that we need more of. Oh, this might also be the problem. Why, why would you be ashamed for, like, hold on a second. What, what in the world is shame, what in the world is shameful about being excited for a Civilization game? Because Civilization is one of the only, like, legendary franchises that still has the original creator working on it. Like, Sid Meier still does programming on Civ. Like, to this day, he is still going into the office and writing code. Which I think is incredibly admirable.
Civ 5 was DLC hell? I'm at the point now where I genuinely believe that literally any video game that includes DLC is going to be referred to as DLC hell. They've literally been like that since Civ first was founded. Like, they clean blood if it's close to a building that's constructed, is what is what gets them cleaning blood. But we were able to butcher this beast, so that's good. I think it was like 400, wasn't it? Pretty sure I was around 600 before. But not bad. Not bad at all. Bunch of mangled bones. It's 256 meat, damn. Two individual eyeballs. Why am I surprised by this? <laughs> uh, you should never pre-order a video game ever. It doesn't matter how excited you are for it. You should never pre-order video games. Although I will say, I'm quite excited for the new Stalker. Um, I was very worried about Stalker, but I've done a little bit of looking into um, the status of that game. And honestly, the previews have me pretty hopeful that it might be good. Maybe I'm getting ahead of things, but honestly, I'm quite hopeful. Like quite hopeful that it will be good. Like I said, I could very well be getting excited for something that's going to disappoint me, but that's gonna be like the first, hmm, can I make this run on Linux game? <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna run into post-installing Linux totem time. We could make a totem. It doesn't super need it though. We'll just get this squad training. Currently my broker is conducting a meeting. I don't know why I'm telling them to go there again. They don't need to, but. Dr. Feelgood, thank you very much for the Prime subscription. Appreciate you greatly. Chatroom, can I please get a big round of beers? Uh, and probably I would assume uh, Motley Crue lyrics. Uh, for the subscription from the one, the only, uh, feeling good of doctors. Thank you. You really like the universe for Pillars, so you're excited for about- Fair enough, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just- I'm real curious to see how Avowed does. Purely just because I, I'm- I, I, I need to know. Like, there is a big enough part of me that I'm like, I actually need to know how good this game is because I'm curious if Obsidian still got it because Obsidian is juggling a lot of things right now. Like, I'm, I'm not going to, like, beat around the bush. They, they're juggling a lot of stuff. They're a very busy little studio. So. Can I name him Feel Good? You know, I was sticking to just gifted subs, but you know what? Because I do have this quota of dwarves to fill, uh, I can see what I can do. Do I have a doctor that isn't named? Because normally we just name based off of the redemptions, but today I extended that also to gifted subs and temporarily... Oh, I need doctors, actually. Um, let's throw Atir in as my, as my doctor. Our surgeon can be... Uh, Indiridius and our bone doctor can be, well, I don't have a bone doctor, so we'll give it to Nimlark. Um, and Atir, the doctor, can be you, Dr. Feelgood. Dr. Feelgood. Um... <clears throat> Has a strong sense of duty, almost never feels discouraged, it tends to be a bit stubborn in changing his mind about things, and is often nervous, is grateful when others help him out, and tries to return favors, and is trusting, and sometimes acts with little de with der with, without determination, and has a greedy streak, occasionally overindulges, and is quite ambitious. Is not particularly interested in what others think of him, and he finds helping others to be emotionally rewarding, and he has a tendency to consider ideas and abstractions for practical applications. He begins to talk more slowly when he's angry and needs alcohol to get through the working day, and doesn't really care about anything anymore. He dreams of raising a family and personally sees the pursuit of good craft worship a total waste. And sees competition as wasteful and silly. Prefers a noisily bustling life to boring days without activity. 
sees Mary making his waist. Fine, he likes fine pewter and lavender and jade and goose leather and linen paper and bucklers and donkeys for their stubbornness in the words of the adorable monk and the and when possible prefers to consume bug bat, giant tapir cheese and long land beer and absolutely hates oysters. And you have a lot of passing acquaintances and absolutely no friends. You're a member of the South Order of Wealths, not to be confused with the East or West Order of Wealths. Worshipping the God of Wealth, I think. Slash assume. Sure, but Pentiment is a very different size, scale, and type of game than Avowed is, right? Like, like I don't think they've made a game like Avow Avowed since they made a... Um, what's the name of that game? I don't think they made a game like Avowed since... Um, since Fallout. I, I could be completely mistaken here, but I'm pretty sure they haven't made a game like that since they made a Fallout game. So it's, it, I don't know. It's just, it's, I've never seen them make a game of that scale since then. So, well, I, I guess you could say Grounded, right? But Grounded is also kind of a very different style of game. Okay. Well, How about... This is going to be a very convoluted... Oh, true, I guess Outer Wilds. True. Y you make a valid point there. I kind of forgot about that game. <laughs> but, yeah, all right, sure. I'll give you that. They did, in fact, make Outer Wilds. Gotta love the aquifer being everywhere. Out of world, right, yeah. I mean, in my defense, their own publisher messed that up once. Like, literally, their publisher messed that up once. So, wor worlds, not wilds. One of these games is memorable. The other one is Outer War <laughs> is Outer Wild. Um... You know, that might might be one of the greatest video game calamities of all time, or naming clashes of all time. All right, Corvius, I need you to um, engrave this memorial. There you go. Yeah, they, they were announced, like days apart they uh have very similar names and you know it's very similar names they were announced around the same time and uh have almost the same name so i don't know to me i think it's understandable that one would mess those two up I think I'm going to do something I almost never do. I'm going to, I'm going to use engraved minecart rails. We'll let them dig this out. We'll see where they end up. I 
Hello, Salvadaddy. What's up? And Fire and Ice. It's good to see you. Outer Worlds was fine. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I definitely heard some negative things about Outer Worlds, but I never played it, so I don't really have any thoughts one way or another. Like, genuinely, not really. Okay, so I need to wait for this to dry. Once this is done drying, then we can probably mine these out. But this needs to be... lockable. And also, I'm pretty sure this area isn't in the burrow, is it? I don't know. It is. You didn't like their weapon upgrade system? Yeah, I, I know very little about that game. I know that that game existed. I, I didn't play it. I watched some streams of it. I watched some people really like it initially and then dislike it a bit by the end. So, you know. I feel like there's a lot of people with opinions about Outer Wilds, but my the all I really know about Outer, Outer Wilds is that game was not on the biggest budget. <laughs> oh, I, I've I've absolutely I think stumbled upon Tim Kaine's YouTube channel, Corellia. But I don't know. I also maintain that I don't really have an opinion, I suppose. Any tavern keep musician, broker, or miner if there isn't one available? I have one musician in the fort, and his name is Cave Johnson already. Uh, for Broker. Broker is Shadow Absorber. And I don't have a Miner available. Actually, that's not true. I do. I, I have got one. I've got Onal. Does Onal work? Overwatch doesn't interest me either, Karelia. I'm just going to say this thing that I say almost every stream. You can't just give things abbreviations they don't deserve. Pretty sure OW is Overwatch, regardless of which one you like more or less. Because suddenly, you could at minimum be talking about three different games. Overwatch, Outer Worlds, or Outer Wilds. I mean, I know what you meant. I'm just saying. Using acronyms where there shouldn't be one does one thing. And that make, is make it harder to understand what you're trying to communicate to the human that you're speaking with. Um, so this is my A-E-L. What's up, Jesse, by the way? I had a neat aesthetic and a decent story, but the world felt really empty, and they just let you build out your character in a way that you can defeat the real final boss. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, but I like that <laughs> in a weird way. Uh, this dwarf wants to pray, and they want martial training. Uh, you're a member of the Creative Festivals. I don't think I have a temple for. Uh, she is interested in facts about and the real world and is impervious to the effects of stress. She enjoys being in crowds and rarely tries to assert herself in conversation. She finds a chaotic mess uh, preferable to the boredom of harmonious living. And uh, she... And... Con the boredom of harmonious living, she sometimes acts with little determination and confidence and does not easily fall in love and rarely develops positive feelings. Tries to do things correctly each time, is quite ambitious and often acts with compassion. She needs alcohol to get through the working day and does not mind being outdoors at least for a time and doesn't really care about anything anymore. She pers she personally sees perseverance in the face of adversity, bullheaded and foolish, finds artwork boring and prefers a noisy, bustling life to boring days without activity, values loyalty and doesn't really value merrymaking. She likes bismuth Rubicel and clear glass. Giant Nautilus shell, the color mauve, and leather armor. Cabinets, and when possible, prefers to consume pineapple wine and absolutely hates worms. And uh, you have no friends, and you worship a deity. Is slash gen Q means slash genuine question? Is that what that means? Uh, I am visually impaired. My, my right eye don't work at all, my left don't work. I think that asking is this a safe space for people with disabilities is like asking, does this place have oxygen? 
That shouldn't even be a question in the current year. It's sad that it has to be. Also add... How much I can do. Anyway, first time I've seen Gen Q, so... Personally, I feel like that should actually mean um, that you are a, a, a member of the Q Consortium, but that would mean that you have unknowable power, and that is terrifying. Nope. I don't remember those days, actually. Do you want to know why? Because there, that those days never existed, the watching one ad. Uh, there was pre-rolls, and then there was people who ran ads. People who ran ads would just show you the ad, um, and they would show you that amount of ads, right? So what you're asking is, do you remember the days where Twitch didn't have automated ads? Which, yeah, I remember that. But there was never a day where you just had to watch one ad. It just meant that that person was only running pre-rolls. There's never really been a time where Twitch only had only run one ad as an option. If someone chooses to show, show pre-rolls and they sh choose to show an ad, then they show an ad. And it's always been that way. So no, I don't remember that, actually. Congratulations on your successful backery and returneth. YouTube and online ads in general. Nope, I don't remember that day because uh, as long as I've been creating content, there have been people that have created created ad breaks with multiple ads in them. So no, I, I don't remember that time. Maybe you do. You live in some sort of strange, different alternate universe to the one that I live in because that's not my experience in the slightest. I don't recall that ever being a consistent thing, in fact. Ah, well, I mean, you're using Instagram, so that's your first mistake. It's very clearly your first mistake. Okay, so this right here is going to get metal ore in it. Um, I mean... I keep staring at framework laptops, so I don't know if I'm to be trusted with that. I used to accidentally click on ads all the time on websites, but I've gotten better at like telling what is and what isn't an ad at a glance. Turns out, pretty good skill to have in the current internet. A pair of gym shorts you probably wouldn't have found otherwise. Best shorts you've ever owned, and I mean that wholeheartedly. Good for you. Terrified while in conflict with what? Oh, probably Kia's. Probably definitely Kia's.
had one gaming laptop broke after half a year, just froze and decided, screw you, I won't, don't want to turn on anymore. Sounds like a failed hard drive. And they're stupidly easy to spot. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I when I say I used to click on ads by mistake, it was gen it was like back when I played RuneScape, so like decades ago. But that was usually because I was idly clicking a tree, and then I would click the banner ads on the edge because I couldn't afford being a. Uh, 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 what's it? What was the, what was the name of their uh, premium subscription? It was like uh, RuneScape members, I think. It's been a long time. Right. And then this goes up to here. And add a second stop. And then you're going to go down. And you are going to fill from the stockpile. And then you, it's gonna be pushed to the right, right? Membu? Hmm. I don't, I don't recall Membu. That's a new one to me, but... Right, this squad, I can tell them to stop training. Go do other things, dwarves. Okay, sweet. You really want to be with family. Do you have any fa Oh, your family died. Well... That's sad. Everything gone, really? As in, like, your account got hacked into? Or a, like... The, the game has just changed that much. Having not, you know, looked at a RuneScape account in probably 10 years, I've, I'm just under the assumption all my shit's been stolen. What material do you use for working with magma and DF? Literally anything that's magma safe, it's listed in the stone screen whether or not it's magma safe. Um, that are just metals that are magma safe, which would be under stone use in the labor screen. Economic and other. Oh, they deleted all the counts. That sucks. <laughs> I mean, I guess it makes sense, but still sucks. I think I should make this stockpile slightly bigger because I've just got bolts everywhere. And this really does need a bin in it, but. Luckily people gave you more stuff than the first day in the first day than you ever accumulated in those free to play years. Huh. Oh, grinding old school runescape? I'm Hopefully you survive, my friend. Uh, you could clip it and go back and look at it, fluffy face. But to reiterate the thing that I just said out loud, go to the labor screen, go to stone use, it shows you what is and what isn't magma safe. So open up this screen by clicking any of these dialogue bits at the bottom. Okay, once you've done that, you click on labor and you click on stone use. There's multiple Finns who watch this stream. Probably some whales too.
made the correct decision to purge most of it. Sure. I mean, it does sound like the correct decision. Doesn't change the fact that I do genuinely believe it kind of sucks a little bit. Finally got that dwarf put to rest. Absolutely finally. It's because I have a volcano spout down here. This is probably the best place to pump lava. Problem is, pumping it safely. But that doesn't change the fact that this is probably still the best place to pump lava. It's probably literally through that pillar is the best, all the way up to here, and then pump it over to the side, and then up from there. Thing is, this is generating more than enough power for it. You know, I don't actually know if magma is magma safe. So I can neither confirm nor deny that. Because magma is magma. How could magma be safe from what it is? It's like asking, are you safe from touching human? Well, I am human. So anytime I touch anything in the general vicinity of me, I'm touching me. So doesn't that make that impossible. I think that um, Car Carbidase in the YouTube chat, one, I don't look at the YouTube chat very often, and two, what do I think about early access games if I think pre-ordering is bad? You need to realize that we're talking about two very different things between pre-ordering and early access. And also, if you looked at half of the games I played on my YouTube channel, you'd realize that like two-thirds of them are early access games. So I think that would probably give you the answer, my opinion of the answer of early access games. I think simply looking at the games that I play and noticing that they're all early access games majority probably gives you a pretty clear image on how I feel about early access, just in general. Oh, a force that is both vile and dark has arrived. Um, and I'm going to just tell my squads to go meet up right here. And not change anything is what I'm going to do. There is a not small number of goblins right there, though. So maybe what I'm going to do is actually jump down to here. Huh. It could be valid if touching humans killed you. That is a silly thing to say. And then this dwarf just runs outside. All right, Bessmer, I mean, if you don't want to be alive, I won't fault you for this. Okay, so I'm going to cancel the closing of this bridge because my soldiers are already here. By that, I mean Kokoroko is here. Kokoroko probably immediately runs into battle. Yes, he does. I'm gonna change the location for my dwarves to go to to be up right there. Okoroko stands stationary for a second, waiting. Petrified. He's now dueling with a goblin. The swords dwarf uh, attacks the goblin, but she jumps away. After dodging a bolt fired at him directly by the goblin, or an arrow. Well, no, definitely a bolt. 
uh, is now dodging multiple sources of bolts as well as beginning the fight. Uh, if I scroll down here, we can see that we do have other dwarves in relatively close proximity that are heading up, so they shouldn't take too long. However, Kokoroko may not survive this conflict because there is a good number of goblins in the general vicinity. It really depends on whether or not our dwarf here is going to take them out quicker than they can take him out or alternatively get a martial trance. It is your opportunity here to be an absolute hero though. Kokoroko says, I have improved my sword and that was satisfying after slashing a goblin in the head with a short sword and the severed part sails off in an arc uh, and then begins dueling with the next goblin in the list, uh, and we see bits flying everywhere. It's actually lodged a sword in a wound after uh, stabbing a goblin in the lower leg with a steel short sword, fracturing the bone through the jabber leather high boot, and then the force twisted the knee, tearing apart the muscle. And uh, I think that was against this goblin, whereas he's just left Macho over here bleeding out heavily, who has no relations, no friends, and uh, just a pile of arrows. Um, this uh, for, uh, goblin right here is also about to go in with the deaths as Kokoroko vaults backwards directly away from a goblin because the goblin attacked him, but he scrambled away. Uh, he stabs the goblin crosswoman in the right hand with a steel short sword, tearing apart the muscle and the giant cave uh, spider silk right glove. Uh, and then an artery has been opened by the attack and many nerves have been severed. Got a sword stuck in the wound and then pulled it out very quickly. Um, then uh, proceeds to uh, jump away. We do have a child here getting shot by bolts. This is Aban, who actually received a, a silver arrow uh, to the upper body. Um, so unless that dwarf is a... Um a, a were creature, they, they'll probably be okay eventually. Kokoroko is probably going to die in battle here. Uh, the other dwarves are heading up at a relatively decent pace, but are not going to be getting here in time. Uh, Kokoroko is bleeding and tired on the ground, overexerted. The child is getting chased, probably, and uh, it appears we may be about to lose this dwarf. Although they are now uh, enraged and angered and fighting with all enemies, uh, probably doing his best pincushion impression currently, and um, bleeding and seriously injured, heavily bleeding. Bleeding. Uh, not yet winded. Where are my backups? Here comes uh, Ast, who's running in and arrives, but it was too late. Rest in peace, Kokoroko. You are a hero for holding off so many goblins. Speaking of goblins, uh, more dwarves are fighting down in the bottom side uh, against the remainder of the uh, attacking uh, goblins. We've got Cyanide KZK, who's currently overexerted and winded after um, uh, getting hit with a bolt in the second toe. Uh, good for you. And meanwhile, uh, Kyle over here is uh, taking out many a goblin rather successfully, I may add. And bits and pieces of viscera are flying in many which direction. And um, the remainders of our of our dwarves up here appear to have bonked, bashed, and slashed their way through goblins. Ast also had a martial trance briefly. Uh, Cyanide here uh, was able to get two kills uh, during said fighting, and however, did withstand some injuries. Uh, and uh, Kyle here, just tired, but made it out scot-free injury-wise. We're now going to remove the dwarves from the burrow, and uh, I am going to claim everything here, put this back into the burrow, and go back to what we were doing. Okay. Defender under the bridge? Oh, definitely. Oops, wrong, wrong buttons. Wrong buttons? Well, right buttons, wrong order, actually. Now, I'll bet you... I could do this. I'll just turn the burrow off for a bit. It'll actually make my life a lot easier. Moods are sorting themselves out sl slowly. One less angry dwarf. Well, I mean, Kokoroko wasn't angry and was actually a pretty good military dwarf, so... At least wasn't super angry. Kokoroko was generally enjoying his career as a glorious military dwarfess. Not all dwarves are automatically unhappy. Cyanide, the metal craft has been found dead, must have succumbed to his wounds. He was winded, so it's pretty likely that um, Cyanide actually died to, uh, like, suffocation from his injuries. 
That is pretty likely. Do also have several dwarves injured in hospital. My diagnoser is currently in hospital, so thus uh, I need another diagnoser. Uh, let's throw in deep sea fish in and let's also throw in napalm. You can be a doctor. Short on beers. 484 is short on beers. Oh, that's why my doctor disappeared, because Dr. Feelgood was found dead. Rest in peace, Dr. Feelgood. You no longer feel good. You, you did feel good while you were alive, though. Bring out your dead! All right, so aside from the part where I'm hitting aquifers, this does seem to be going pretty okay. This whole mining out stuff thing does seem to be going pretty okay. Oh, those are walls. Well, I should probably do floors. Okay, let's do some rock hatch covers. How did you die? You died to goblins in that siege just now. See, goblin crossbowmen killed you. Um, I don't actually have the combat log left, it doesn't look like, but uh, the, the last thing that was said about you was the goblin crossbowman bashes the doctor in the head with an iron crossbow, and your head exploded. Did we find metals? Nope, that's definitely not what this is. Nope, absolutely not metals. We did not find metals. I can neither confirm nor deny the finding of metals. If you think we found metals here, please don't invade me for my metals because I definitely have no metals. Only, only plastics here. After a day in the caverns. Yeah, no, just, just microplastics and uh, other cancer-causing substances. Actually, you know what? This would be much easier to do if it was just a very small stockpile. Metal ores. There we go. And your dressing wounds. There you go. Cats are actually goblins, but more adoptable. I mean, probably. Two seconds, chat. I gotta go check something. Jeez! 
for everyone! Let's take a lovely fruit, the tomato. Remove everything that's good from it, the seeds, the vitamins, the, the nutrients, everything that's good about it, and just jam it full of shit garbage shit sugar and put it in a shit bottle that sounds like shit when you put it on your shit. It's shit! Stop eating ketchup! How tasty grilled cheese? Wait, what? Grilled cheese sounds nice. Okay. Nuclear vessels. He has stole a goblet. Fitting. So this last one's not going to work here. Big monsters have a lot of ways in right now. You very much enjoy it. I might play some more of that city tonight because I'd like to, you know, get through as decent amount of that, that this version of the game's content. We'll see, though. Grab a couple more of these. Nimlark's gonna run down here. Gonna run all the way over to here. You gotta go now. We'll see you later, Neezer. Thanks for swinging by for what, for the time you did today. And uh, hopefully you're able to catch the VODs. Fortunately, they're not ephemeral, ephemeral so you don't need to have a, a net or anything. You'll just naturally catch them. But yeah, the VODs started going up the other day, breaking them down into pretty short chunks. I don't really feel like becoming... New York, where I'd start breeding giant rats. Six hundred and sixty six drinks. It's a good amount of drinks, yeah. Good amount of drinks. Really need a better bridge for these dwarves to use. Because this current bridge is very roundabout and difficult to get to. So I think what I'm going to do actually is just dig through this again. <laughs> I think I'm just going to dig through this sucker again. Do have this door here. We'll, we'll plop another couple doors in. But this just seems like a much better use of my time this way. Or my dwarves time, I suppose. Are continuing to dig this way. We're getting there. So I figure that if I do this correctly, I can just like fill the entire place up with water pretty damn quick and then drain it all out just as quick. Also, I've, I'm in an ad right now, so I will check back in in a second. Um. Oh, I see. Listed as auto, which would be the problem.
I mean, that's not what I meant when I said build a bridge. I meant build a bridge like this, you know, like a constructed bridge made out of blocks with railings and all sorts of other nice vanities and then make it blockable. Just so that my dwarves are more efficient about crossing the water instead of taking the super duper duper roundabout inefficient way. But you know, uh, people don't generally listen to what I say, so it's, it's fine. Also just gonna get rid of this temporarily so that they go do this instead, potentially. It's almost like uh, I don't, when I say build a bridge, I, I don't necessarily mean build default door fortress bridge. It's almost like that. Cer certainly possible it's like that. Hmm. Why didn't you go for that? Odd. So, I don't know. Inst designs of bridges may be bad. My designs of bridges are pretty good. I think I think my designs for bridges are better than yours. Praise be to the flood machine. Crypt beer. Hey, chat room. Can I get a big round of beers for Napalm keeping that subscription alive for a 19th month? Napalm is our uh, our doctor actually currently and really wants martial training apparently. Is married to Elfie Bean and has a kid. Is afraid after reliving experiencing trauma. I'm so sorry. I do hope that your mental state improves at some point in the future, near or far. <laughs> you poor fools. It's fine. Do you have, even have any skills? I don't actually think you do. <laughs> uh, eh, eh, eh. Okay, you're dabbling. I'm sure you're very good at your job. Erase your pint? Mm. What are we storing in stockpiles? Ah. Right. Let's try and do less of that. Cashmere goat just made a masterpiece pig tripe roast. Yeah, no, the wall, the, the riverbeds are weird because they don't have any sprites unless you build and then unbuild on them, which is kind of a pain, to be honest. It's one of those things where it's like, man, I wish that didn't work that way. Life would be easier if it didn't, but it does. So it's kind of unfortunate. Uh, I've drained it and refilled it multiple times. But I haven't actually filled it nor drained it today. That's just been empty the whole day. Got so many bodies. So many bodies. Fortunately, though, this is pretty efficient. Fortunately. Can a pun be a pun if it's not funny? Yes. To go to a different house. We'll see you when we see you, Fennec Fox. Enjoy the traveling from one home to another. Consider it a glorious journey and an adventure. I wish you all the best. Safe travels. I don't know. I mean, you, you could be like going to a friend's house. You could be going to a relative's house. You could be... 
going from the house you work at to the house you don't work at? I don't know. Maybe you work in somebody's house. Maybe you have a spouse. I, I'm not accusing you of owning two houses or nothing. I mean, what else are we going to put in this stockpile? Clothed goblin corpses? That's absolutely ludicrous to even suggest. I guess I'm just out of cloth, eh? Yep, pretty much. We are out of cloth. What's next? Gremlin mayors? Um, well, I had a gremlin captain of the guard once. Never a mayor, though. Chat, I think it's time for mandatory happy feels o'clock, which is a very important time. It's where I throw every single dwarf into the military and um, give everybody temporary military jobs and um, then tell them to all train in the middle of the fountain. <laughs> so we're going to do that for a little bit, I think, because it's midwinter. And I think these dwarves require some wrestling training. Bought Dwarf Fortress recently, and uh, your YouTube videos have helped you enjoy and understand the game so much more. Happy to help. And freed. Your army friend, when they uh, took him on a hike uh, at Devil Lake in the rain. Ah, sounds lovely. Uh, Devil Lake sounds like a great place to spend lots of time. Hmm. There's a conspicuous troglodyte skeleton here. Well, we can work on toughening up these dwarves while also spraying them with water and making them train some military skills. I'm sure that this is going to do nothing but improve moods. How in the world would a fortress exist without a tavern, my friend? Of course there's a tavern. In fact, I think we have two. Got taverns, temples... All kinds of great spaces. I mean, this is very clearly a tavern right here, the Copper Fall. And this is the second floor of it, which also doubles up as a dining room with some very nicely encrusted tables and thrones. This is an office and a bedroom connected to it. Same with this one. Although nobody owns this office. And uh, Dishmab, the recruit, withdraws from society. And has claimed a stoneworker's workshop and grabbed a boulder. Well, a lot of dwarves like... Well, see, here, here's the thing, right? Just like reality, some people like target shooting. Some people like um, martial arts. Some people like wrestling. Some people like combat sports, such as football or hockey. Um, or uh, UFC. Some people just have this hobby called exercise, right? And a lot of different types of exercise can be boiled down to martial arts training or, um, you know, combat training in, in the very mild sense, right? So it doesn't make too much strangeness that dwarves would also enjoy the occasional act of um, martial arts training. I think it makes a lot of sense, personally. Bookshelf threw you off. I put bookshelves everywhere because they look cool and cost nothing. Really? 
Like they're just a piece of material. So uh, shale, pig leather, cave spider silk cloth, featherwood logs, iron bars, sheep's wool cloth, alpaca wool cloth, and pig leather. Also, I need to check how many bars I have. Iron. I have four. Excellent. Also, why are you empty? And let's see what the actual moods do. Wolf Sire, what are you so upset about? Everything. What else are you upset about? Everything else. Um, what was the last upsetting mood you had? You saw Mebzeth's dead body. Well, pfft. Hmm. At least you're not haggard. You're just stressed, which means you are completely recoverable. You want excitement and you want to learn something. Which may be a sign that dwarf as a... some sort of worker in the military. See, like, this random dwarf wants martial training, but probably wouldn't be great in the military. Also wants to make romance. Have you tried talking to your wife, Skywell? Like... Although the make where romance need just vanished, so must have spoken with his spouse. Dishmab the Recruit has created Vodka Lure... Uh, Matt Basek, a shale amulet, and offers it to the big fall. Well, get in the squads, you lazy Dorfus, and we'll figure out what, what we're going to do with this thing. Uh, this is a shale amulet. All craft worship is of the highest quality. It is, encir it is in encircled with uh, shale cabochons and decorated with pig leather and encircled with bands of cave spider silk, and this object menaces with spikes of feather wood and alpaca wool and pig leather. On the item is an image of the blockaded gates the large pale metal chain leggings in iron on the item is an image of uh dwarves and chiefs wool the dwarves are traveling the artwork relates to the formation of romance girder by the hall of salves of the steel mirrors in year one i need a pedestal to put this on like maybe one up here It's an, it's an amulet. Borat voice. Not again! I was supposed to die with cultural boredom. But unfortunately, I lived on. Tributes of Anger is a particularly good name. I like that one. Yeah, that's one thing that I really like about Legends. It, 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 Ilari, or however you say your name. Um, that's one of the reasons I, I, I enjoy Legends is because a lot of the big bad monsters and demons and evil characters in the world just end up becoming Dragon Ball characters where they're just like, you know, uh, how, how do I put this? Like going around and participating in global wrestling competitions and fighting with like incredi strong ultimate monster characters and that stuff's just funny to me Let's see once martial training this dwarf it's a lot of unmet needs but one of them also is training you want martial training real bad just a pile of dwarfs right there you if you want to make romance again man it's funny. But, you know, Legends is... Uh, I just wish it was accessible in Fort Mode and in Adventure Mode, but they said that they're going to give us in-game tie-ins to those. So here's hoping someday in the future you'll just be able to click one button and it'll just automatically take you there. I think that would be a lovely, lovely change of pace.
But yeah, I'm not sure how long today's stream is going to be. It's probably it's just kind of until I get tired today. Um, because I'm still trying to figure out if... Welcome back, UDK. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to run the schedule currently because, you know, sometimes I just feel like I... I, I the schedule fits, and sometimes it's like, mm, not quite, I'm too tired this week. So, highly depends on my general level of awakeness. Got a dwarf that just became a wrestler. Because we need these recruits to start becoming wrestlers in order to, you know, satisfy that need. It's like Finnish Idler. Hmm. Okay. Idlers are bad in Dorfort, though. Because there's no such thing as idlers, and when people think there is, then they get upset when their dwarves aren't doing, air quotes, optimal work when they don't ever actually need to. <laughs> Which will always be kind of funny to me. Uphold tradition is always fun to me. What is uphold tradition? Be curious without any respect. Dreams of mastering a skill. Relatively worthless. I don't know, chat. What's going on? I'm j honestly, I've just been kind of rambling for the last hour. Uh, we are, you know, trying to train up dwarves to work on moods a little bit. Fought with a forgotten beast. Not too much else has happened. Give Dr. Feelgood a new dwarf. No. They just had a dwarf and they died. I'm not going to name a dwarf somebody the same thing twice in one day. If you can come up with a different username, I'll give somebody else a dwarf, though. Because, like, I'm not going to bend the rules that much for today. As fun as an idea as that is, uh, give it to somebody who hasn't had one yet. Let's at least name, like, three or four other dwarves before we name another one Dr. Feelgood. I think that's fair, right? Is your dwarf still alive? Yep. Still alive. So is there anybody else you would like to give a dwarf to? All oh, right. So uh, Idler of Karelia is, is getting a dwarf. Chat room. What kind of dwarf do they get? Although we don't know what any of their jobs are right now. So it's like playing a raffle because they're all just recruits. You, please. Not this time. Although you could nominate yourself, Cave. Yeah, I, 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 there's a lot of things that would be nice to have in Dwarf Fort, and that's one of them. I just want the ability to send letters. Can you ask for a dwarf? No! Well, I, I've, I've loosened up the limitations right now. Um, so, Tier 2 subscribers can nominate people for dwarves. And uh, if somebody gifts a subscription, they can name a dwarf. Because I can't expand the population counts until every dwarf is named. So no, you can't ask for a dwarf, but somebody can do what Raging Cave just did. So now you have the opportunity to maybe get a dwarf chat room. Are we giving I Ate Your Lobsters a dwarf? So I'm just going to give uh, 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 Idlery uh, a, a random dwarf because they haven't given me an answer. So you're getting the happiest dwarf in the fort, which happens to be this dwarf. She never acts without prolonged deliberation, even to the harm and detriment to those around her. And uh, never feels discouraged and is very easily falls into love and develops positive feelings. And uh, beers don't count towards votes. You gotta, you gotta vote. Although, the chat room, we need an overwhelming vote. Can, 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 how, how many people are watching the stream right now? I'm actually opening up the view count. We have 161 of you and f I got four yes. Can we get some more? It has to be overwhelming, chat. Um, very easily falls in love and develops positive feelings. Uh, does, doesn't cling tightly to ideas, is open to changing her mind, and tends to consider what others think of her. Is somewhat, uh, it likes to brawl and is somewhat disturbed by this since she values quiet, or at least in the abstract, is stubborn, and is somewhat uncomfortable around those that, live, that appear unusual or live differently from herself, occasionally overindulges and needs alcohol to get through the working day, and doesn't really care about anything anymore. I can't read that. Personally, value, value, views tranquility uh, as one of the highest ideals and gets cock blocked by the game saving and personally believes that those who sacrifice for others should be deeply respected. Like this loading bar. Deeply respect it. All caps, yes, doesn't count. You gotta use the emote past it. 
Mm-hmm. Fraga, what up? Karma and a horrible death. <laughs> Give it some time and you might get a new one. I mean, there's always opportunities to get a new one. I just, I, I feel like it's kind of bad to play favorites and just constantly resurrect one dwarf if they keep dying. Because one, it makes legends indecipherable, and two, give somebody else a chance. All right, so <clears throat> let's finish with that one. Uh, you do have a quarters and a grave. You don't have an office, though. If I check your, your bedroom, it does have a connected office. And now you have an office. Whoops. It's interesting that you can't search for a dwarf once they're selected. I was going to use this to jump to them. Oh, well. You're also very happy, I should add, because you were the happiest dwarf on the list. And preferences wise, you like sulfurite, rose gold, and purple spill, hagfish, lever, hemp, paper, and shields and reindeer for their herds. When possible, prefers to consume giant leopard, parsnip wine, and foxtail millet flower, and white millet, and absolutely hates jumping spiders. Uh, and you're in love with Cave Johnson. Which probably is a mistake, but um, the next dwarf getting named here is uh, the one and the only, the glorious, the great, the fantastic, the dwarfy, the, I'm scrolling up to remind myself who it was. Uh, I eat your lobsters, chat. Uh, what kind of dwarf does I eat your lobsters the get? To get at the nut. For the happiest available dwarves, we have a, da, 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 a wrestler, a recruit, a soon to be demoted militia camaptain, camaptain, yes, that's, that's, that's a word. Uh, do you want a beard or no beard? We'll just call it luck. A ballet? A no beard spear dwarf. I don't think I have a single spear in this fort. I can give you a swords dwarf. Like this one. If that works for you. I eat your lobsters is a no beard spear dwarf, and she has the day job of a high master fisher dwarf, which actually kind of checks out. Uh, never acts without prolonged deliberation to the har to her own detriment and the harm of those around her. Uh, she desires little for herself in the way of possessions and doesn't stick with things even if minor difficulties arise. She finds this troubling since she values perseverance. She is pleased by her own appearance and talents and runs past a skeleton. And uh, she is pleased by her own appearance and talents, and she is quite comfortable with others that have a different appearance or culture. And she doesn't mind wearing something special now and again, and fe often feels discouraged and does not go out of her way to help others. She could be considered rude and can handle stress. She is curious and eager to learn, and she licks her lips when she's nervous, and she becomes very focused during conversations when she's angry. And uh, she needs alcohol to get through the working day and doesn't really care about anything anymore. Uh, dreams of raising a family and personally is affronted by the whole notion of maintaining decorum and find so-called dignified people disgusting. Believe the idea of war is utterly repentant and win a peace at all costs, any cost, it, damn it. Believes that perseverance is one of the greatest qualities that somebody can have, and believes that time taken to master a skill is a horrible waste. Values family, and sees guile and cunning as indirect and somewhat worth ass. You would call bolts a baby spear? Hmm. I'll have to consider that for a moment, and then forget that you asked and suggested similarities between spears and a bolt. Well, aside from getting a bolt to the face, what other horrible memories do you have here, Aban? Ah, you saw a dead body, but you learned to value power after seeing a dead body. That seems like a positive in the long run. Zenith Oscar, thank you very much for the Prime subscription. I greatly appreciate you. Thank you very much for helping keep this channel funded. And thank you very much for helping me continue to make, like, weird content and art for people. Just a reminder, uh, I do have a daily minimum. That daily minimum is the amount of money I make in the day that puts me up above minimum wage, assuming I hit eight hours of time streamed. And in order to hit that, we need another 40 bucks on the day. Just 
it's a heads up to anybody if anybody's wondering, because that's something that I update people on now. Standard play, well, you truly are a child, and uh, this one over here is listening to a story. Are you telling a story? What story are you telling here, kiddo? The story of the dwarf animal became the captain of the Big Fall in 347. Aww. I was going to say it would be really cute if animal was related to you, but not. Also, you have a pet? Guinea pig. What's up, Rallyas? Um. Well, moods are sorting themselves out slowly. It's frustrated after being unable to practice a martial art for too long. Well, I've got this sorted, okay? Like, you, you, you might be frustrated, but we're about to sort that problem out. In fact, you literally just improved fighting, which means now it's sorted. Do some here needs to martial training, which should go away in a second. Uh, bolt to the chest, actually. To be fair, you didn't get a bolt to the head. You got a crossbow to the head so hard that your head exploded. So, honestly, I think these are two different situations here. Not really need to be compared. Man, this dwarf wants everything, Salva. Like, look at this. Wants to cause trouble, acquire objects. Literally wants to do everything. Apparently a giant rat has been missing for a week. Well, that's unfortunate. UGDPY has trained. You still want to uphold tradition there, dwarf. I kind of want to stare at the Uphold Tradition Dwarf until they satisfy that need to Uphold Tradition, because I do really wonder. Several Dwarves still need martial training. Uh, no. No, it's not. Crossbow is a terrible melee weapon, but bashing things with a crossbow does train Warhammer. Which I think is kind of funny. What's up, Flax? Also, hi, hey, man. Also, because I haven't said this enough today, chat room, we're in the dregs of summer. This means that like 30 to 40% of my audience in a lot of cases just straight up doesn't tune in. I know people will always be like, but we'll come back, and I know you will, but I just need to be clear that this happens literally every summer. Statistically, in the last five years, June's been the worst month of the year every year for me. Financially, and average view counts wise. Follows wise, chat activity, literally everything. So, I just have to say thank you to those of you who tune in on a, in a June month. A month of June. Second worst one will be next month, but... Appreciate you guys. It's too hot to think. Too hot to dwarf. Too hot to watch video games, sit outside, pour water on face, and cry. Yeah, no, I, that's what I've been doing most of my evenings. I, I feel you right there. Let's literally just sit inside and pretend it's cooler. Because, I mean, what else are you going to do? Sharing an acquaintance's personal insight. Hmm. That's an interesting memory. I mean, yesterday when I was gardening for a bit, it was pretty warm yesterday. I actually had like a little, or no, two days ago, not yesterday. Yesterday was pretty cool. The day before, it was pretty warm, and I was doing some gardening. I literally literally had a little spritz bottle. I was just misting myself every so often, so. 
I guess I can empathize with the dwarves desire to um, stand in a waterfall a little bit. Although standing by a waterfall is oddly relaxing, but probably not for the same reason dwarves find it re relaxing. They really don't mess around on server ads the moment your sub drops. Uh, well, they're automated in every 30 minutes, and it's a minute and 30 seconds of ads every 30 minutes, which, yeah, it's not nothing. But they're not messing around. I could turn them off. The difference is if I don't turn them off, then if I turn them off, then literally everybody who comes in from a raid gets served an ad before they come in, which in my opinion is worse for the health of the chat and the stream than showing scheduled ads, because at least when they're scheduled, I know when people are seeing ads, which in my opinion is better than not knowing when somebody see is seeing an ad. And besides, I actually get less ad revenue this way, which I think is kind of funny. But um, they're not messing around. I'm the one that's not messing around. Congratulations on the 15 stream streak. I still don't know if I should respond to those or even acknowledge them. Got a tank? Had to do it in two shifts, once in the morning and once in the evening, I guess. I did most of it in the evening, so it wasn't too bad. You did not expect your voice? What? Oh, the, 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 the audio, like, text-to-speech? I mean, it is what it is. It's fine. Who's the least happy dwarf now? Still Aban? Well. And Dominoc. This dwarf is off to go drink. Still literally wants everything as a need. Especially crafting an object. Is a grandmaster miner and isn't allowed to craft objects, so I'll actually remove you from mining as your main gig. Let you do other things. Also, I never knew this. Did you know this, Salva? But you're married to Kage Nara, who was one of our barons in a previous fort. Probably read this out when I read this dwarf, but... Here's hoping your spouse shows up. Yeah. It's always interesting when it's just like, oh, hey, look, it's a devilish potato is your niece. <laughs> I do love when that happens. Okay, we're going to go into, oops, go into here. Get rid of the first two squads. They can start doing unrelated jobs again. Are they all bald? No, they are not all bald. There are definitely dwarves with hair in this fortress. It's just most of them have hoods on, so you can't actually see them, but... I have absolutely seen dwarves that have hair, but now that you point this out, I'm seeing a lot of bald dwarves. So maybe it is a cultural thing for this faction, but the starting dwarves, uh, most of them had hair. But I'll be honest with you, I haven't looked at it since, uh, or thought about it much since I started bringing in other dwarves. I wonder if it's a cultural thing. His hair's clean shaving, maybe, might be. Cloak Sprite also makes them bald? Huh. Okay. <laughs> Wonder if this is anything like uh, wearing... Salva Daddy's finally satisfied. With that one need that they... <laughs> okay, how many recruits do I still have? Kind of a decent amount.
Let's wait until Doosim clears this. As in, like, it makes them no longer have hair when they take the cloak off, or just it looks like there's no hair when they're wearing the cloak? Saw a lot of alerts go up at once. Uh, noticed that we have a storm running through this part of the state, though, so it should be expected. I mean, I, I love when I get, like, heat wave warning to my phone, and then I go, what, what, where? And then I open up the app and realize that it's like, oh, it's Las Vegas. It's like, okay, well, Because I tend to um, add a place when I go visit there to my... Um, to my weather app, and then it sends me some notifications sometimes for extreme weather warnings. Only affects the spray. Okay, so that 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 that's good. But yeah, it might be a cultural thing. I don't know. The last word I had, everybody had hair. So. <laughs> We've got more dwarves becoming wrestlers. Corvius Suede wants martial training, so we'll let you sit here and train until you get it. Yep, yeah, because we're fixing it. Because we're doing mandatory um, wrestling times. Why would the mayor murder anyone? I Nobody's been murdered by anybody yet. Like, there hasn't... There's just that one dwarf that went berserk a while ago, but that was it. Why would the mayor murder anyone? Mayor's quite happy, actually. Generally, dwarves don't randomly get murdered in my forts. Well, the thing is, the reason the moods were so far down was the forgotten beast that got in that killed a bunch of dwarves <laughs> towards the end of the last uh, time we played this fort. And aside from that being quite frustrating for me, it was a... How do I explain this? A process that we had to go through. And once it was sorted, it was, it was kind of fine. And now we're back stuck in that situation again, sort of, because the moods got bad. And so what we do is we sort them. Yeah, just because they were... Okay, so I'm a black metalhead and a self-described Satanist. Uh, have I killed anybody, do you think? I realize the answer to this question is not going to be flattering, but, like, come on. Don't look in my walls, that's all I'm saying, especially the place that looked recently patched. The religion that the dwarf has doesn't mean that they are going to go kill somebody. They could worship the god of death and disease, and they're not going to try and kill things nor get a disease. They just worship that god. Christianity is, is uh, very much a body-shaming cult. So I can confirm that yes. Being a passive Satanist is certainly more chill. I love how Doosim didn't actually manage to get martial training need completed, but hey. What are most of them doing? Probably just planting seeds. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of planting seeds and putting stuff away. Well, that's fine. Satanista? Well, that sounds cute. Legally Blonde Logic? I haven't seen Legally Blonde in a really long time, so I can neither confirm nor deny the accuracy of said logic. Also, Cyanide's body apparently didn't get bu buried, which is a little bit disturbing. Hmm. 
All right, corpses is the. I was like, you did die. Up in this area, didn't you? Hmm. Well, I could, um, do this instead. It's okay, Diamond's been losing ever and calling it rigged longer than most of you, so. Diamond has the right to say it's rigged, even if it's not. Lose the 50-50 raffle, rigged! It's not wrong, it is rigged against you. Sorry, is on cooldown, UDK. We're going beast, uh, Desker has come. Not to be confused with Wesker. It is a eyeless petrosaur. It has three long curly tails and a gaunt appearance. Beware it's poison bite. Its gray scales are blocking close set. So it is in an area where it can get to me. So I'm going to turn the burrow on and follow it. And also tell both of these dwarves to go equip their gear. Very curious as to where it's heading. Doesn't look like a petrosaur. Not everything has the like the sprites, right? And petrosaurs are one of them. A lot of the birds are missing sprites for the forgotten beasts. Well, that's exciting. Up on the surface. Hmm. Well, that's bad for Doosum's survivability. Maybe run there, dwarf? Yeah, accurate. Is very much running in the wrong direction but is running fast enough that hasn't been hit yet. But uh, rest in peace, pieces to do some. The freshly mutilated and now mangled corpse. Bring out your dead! Would have survived if they'd only gotten that martial training. Ah, I uh, wasn't really sure where it was going to pop up, but up here was um, not what I was expecting. Fortunately, we do have Cathode Raytube, who's in the general vicinity, but now suddenly bleeding. Uh, the marks for attacks for Gun Beast, but he jumps away and is now dodging around it. Here comes another one of my marks, Wurves. Uh, this one uh, also hasn't had time to grab bolts, but they are dodging around it. Cathode is bleeding, but admittedly not dying, so I guess that could be worse. Uh, as for the rest of the military, well, we're, we are waiting for them to arrive in the, 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 the general location of our current uh, uh, stay and place that we are in. Uh, where is you? Okay, you are all the way down there getting provisions. You're over here getting provisions. There's actually a bunch of dwarves getting provisions. I should probably just leave them on, like, like uniformed, but off-duty at all times. We've got other dwarves fighting. Then uh, Nimlark goes and jumps into the fight and gets launched backwards. And um, do you slam into a wall and explode? Well, you did slam into the wall, but you didn't explode. 
Um, in fact, you were just stunned upon hitting the obstacle, so I guess that's a good thing. Uh, this dwarf over here, Cathode, is now injured after probably getting bit, right? Yeah, it seems like that. Um, Cathode is continuing to fight. Oh, and now Cathode's blood is on the ground. Uh, Nimlark is uh, doing the thing a second time and running back in. Uh, Cathode's blood's going everywhere, is bleeding heavily and in pain. Nimlark is attempting to be a hero and is now um, zero. Uh, a dog is going flying. This forgotten beast is officially a bad person. Uh, we've got another dwarf who's now fighting with this beast who's now dying. Uh, we've got the rest of the military now piling into the, to the uh, hellfire. And who was that that died? That was Cyril. Okay. Um, the, right here we have a hammer dwarf that is bashing the forgotten beast. Silver Warhammer. The other melee dwarves appearing in the general vicinity. Bits and pieces and blood going everywhere. And somebody fired a bolt even. And it appears that that may be the end of uh, that forgotten beast. What was the last hit that hit it even? Um... Sword Dwarf slashes the Forgotten Beast in the neck with a steel short sword, and the severed part sails off in an arc. So the short sword, the Sword Dwarf is probably I ate your lobsters. Nope, not I ate your lobsters. How about you? Uh, Desker, the lonely echo of pits. Appears to have gotten. Uh, it means that they are basically fighting effectively and enjoying it. Is what that means. That could have been a lot worse. A lot worse. But also could have been a lot better. I also currently don't have a chief medical dwarf who I'm going to give to Salva. You can be my chief medical dwarf now. And I also just lost my captain of the guard again, uh, who's going to be Lanix. And Lanix, that means I get to unassign and give you a new bedroom. Because Lanix now gets this. Meanwhile, the uh, English, the woodcrafter, has bestowed the name Umrakikur Samam Rith upon a steel short sword, which I think is kind of awesome. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make another stockpile here, and this is just going to be for coke and coal. I think it's just bars and blocks, right? I guess it's all just considered cold generic. Oh, I understand why this isn't working. Never did set you to load ore. Are they putting bodies in tombs? Am I... Do I have some settings wrong? Yeah, all right, well. 
Uh, you're not a military dwarf. You're a captain of the guard. So you're actually arresting dwarves? So you better be a good arrester. Although the first dwarf that's been arrested is repentant. Even though they did nothing wrong. So now you're just running around. Although you're satisfied after chaining up a creature. And just like that, we're back down to 48 dwarfs. Chad, how you guys liking this particular fort? Has it been an enjoyable fortress to watch? I'm curious. Is this an aquifer? This must be an aquifer. I'm going to smooth this whole thing, actually, I think. That's what I'm going to do. What's the goal here? Exclamation point goal. We'll always give you the answer to that question. Well, maybe not always, but generally we'll give you the answer to that question. And while it won't be the answer to that question, but we'll make my uh, good brain chemicals happen more frequently, slightly more frequently anyway, uh, go f follow my blog. So we can try and build something that is free of big investing, inv big investors and uh, corporate platforms. Because, you know, who doesn't like to be a cool member of the indie web to a degree? Meditate on longe longevity? Mm. Everybody go and go smooth the wall. So now that these are all here, what I can do is I can do this. I can add this stop, tell you to fill from this, tell you to fill with nothing but coal. And um, remove all these. And I need another minecart. So you right there. Do make me minecart, please. And Melville, the farmer, has been found dead. Wait, what? Oh, no, sorry. Deuce and Melville, the farmer, has been found dead. Although I already knew that they were dead because we saw them die. In front of our eyes. It was horrifying. Is there any plans to include videos on the blog itself? Um, unlikely. Well, I mean, like, it'll link to videos, but I'm not going to pay the hosting fees to host videos on a independent server. That's a bit much. Audio is kind of my limit, because audio host hosting for audio is already not cheap. So tossing, like, video into that, mm. Don't know. <laughs> Gave us all a bad memory, Rip Doosum. Yep, pretty much. Ass is gonna go place the tracks vehicle.
Chestnut minecart? Seems pretty fine to me. And you're gonna go push this track vehicle. As this stuff slowly gets allocated for somewhere else. Why is the dwarf population never going up? I've said it about two dozen times today, I would say, um, because I'm limiting the population to 55 and cannot turn it up until every single dwarf is named. Oh, no, totally. Like, the hosting costs... For, like, it's, live streaming bro and websites like Twitch start to make a lot more sense why things are not cheap the second you look at the actual, like, bandwidth costs for hosting it. And I know everybody goes, but they're Amazon. Amazon have unlimited money, so they should just do it for free. It's like, well, clearly you've never worked in business, <laughs> if that's the way you feel. As much as, like, I wish that was the case. It's just not representative of the way reality works, unfortunately. Considering I, I also wish that it did represent reality, it just doesn't. Yep. No, you're, you're very much correct. Uh, Kashmir's trying to give uh, Yoit Meholo a dwarf. Chat, do we give Yoit Meholo a dwarf? Yes or no? Vote yay or vote nah. It's up to you. You know, one of these days you'll remember the actual command for that one. It's hell yeah. I realize it's not easy to remember and I should make it better so it's my fault, not yours. But one of these days you'll remember it. And one of these days I'll remember to update the name of it so that it's something easy to remember. And that'll be the day that you remember it. And then you'll be like, blind, I remember it now. And you changed it. And I'll be like... <laughs> Anyways, um, so... <clears throat> uh, do you want a beard or no beard? Yo, it's Maholo. Boy dwarf or lady dwarf? That is the question. What's the happiest dwarf doing? Storing item in the stockpile. And it's you. I mean, it says yo, it me holo, but yo, it me holo is funnier sounding in my brain. But if you capitalize it, it'll be easier to read the first time correctly. I'm basically just like forgetting that spaces exist and running your name together into one void. The first name ever given stays no matter what. I don't know how I would do that. But anyway, uh, yo at me holo. Uh, do you, yo at me holo. Do you do, do you want uh, a beard or, or no? Do you want a boy dwarf or a lady dwarf? Because you've been given a dwarf. We'll go from there. Beard K. Uh, you are a thresher. Holo over here is currently just realizing that streamer is stuck in an ad, ad break, so I will wait until the ad break is done before I read this dwarf. I'm gonna just state, I have no idea how I would implement that, what that means, or what you're referring in relation to. So your explanation didn't do anything to help me understand what you're talking about, Laya.
the day that people realize that, like, I know exactly when ads are playing and generally just cease, like, the conversation or reset the conversation afterwards and will realize that I don't need to be informed immediately that, like, I, you're seeing an ad. I know. <laughs> it's just as annoying for me as you. I'm just staring at an annoying countdown timer that breaks the flow of conversation every 30 minutes. All right, so this is your dwarf. Uh, you uh, have one passing acquaintance who's Alfie Bean. Um, you join the fort in 347, which means you basically have spoken with nobody. Uh, you're blissful after sleeping in a very good bedroom. You do have modest quarters in a study. Uh, you're hungry currently. Uh, you're a member of the Cult of Ash and a member of the Guild of Tweeting, which is a farmer's guild. Uh, never acts without prolonged deliberation, even to his own detriment and the harm of those around him. Uh, yo, at me, holo, and, and enjoy the ad-free viewing for the next uh, however long you keep that subscription running. And thanks for subscribing. Check out a big round of beers for them uh, subbing through the ad burk. Um, <clears throat> uh, he is an optimist, and he is trusting, and he has a very calm demeanor. Uh, and he is a friendly individual. He doesn't mind wearing something special now and again and has a sense of duty. Uh, he is rarely happy or optimistic or enthusiastic for that matter and is conflicted by this. He values parties and merrymaking in the abstract. He's quick to anger and he tends to hang on to grievances and he has the greatest ethnic sensitivity. He's conflicted by this. He doesn't value he values artwork in his creation and he doesn't often experience strong cravings or urges and he is a tight, he is tight with delivering resources when working on certain projects. Blah. Uh, he uh, generally is quite confident in his, um, in his abilities when undertaking specific ventures. He is pleased by his own appearance and talents, and he's curious and eager to learn. Uh, he likes to take it easy, and he is not particularly interested in what others think of him, and he could be considered rude. He begins Cash to talk zero in cheered. monotone when he's bored, and needs alcohol to get through the working day. For that hype mine card again. Uh, you, need, mate, you need to fish deeper for that. You need to... There was there's one resub, but granted, you did get it within a minute. You need an additional two cohorts to hype minecart. But let me tell you this. I appreciate your desire and need to start the minecart, but realize it is completely, utterly, and 100% pointless to even try unless there is a group of people to actually level it up. Otherwise, you're just starting a cart that's gonna inevitably die. Today has been painfully slow for money and you are literally the only person giving me money uh, in the last few hours, aside from Corvius with the five pack of gift subs. So because this has been a painfully slow day for money, period, um, as this entire month has been, and will continue to be, with the exception of the 3rd of June, because that's my birthday. Remember, unless you're willing to level it out, don't even bother. Because stuff's just gonna passively come in. Until, like, a bunch of people resub in a row and almost start a minecart. Begging for it, unless you're willing to personally drive it, just wait until you see the countdown timer up top and start one then. Because then you're not just potentially wasting what will be a flat train anyway. Unfortunately, summer's dead season here, and unless I drastically change my content, that's never gonna change, so, you know. Where was I? He is personally thoroughly disgusted by cooperation, finds maintaining a decorum a silly and fumbling waste of time, and values a harmonious existence. Doesn't really see the point in working hard and dreams of creating a grand work of art. Likes iron, wax opal, red-winged blackbird leather, hemp paper, gems, picks, millstones, amulets, alpacas for their long necks. And of course, the sound of the zephyr of glimmers and when possible prefers to consume hungry head, nautilus, and soft wheat beer. Welcome to the fort. And uh, you want to admire art and cause trouble. Did somebody just die? Cyanide, the metal crouch has been put to rest. Well, that's good. I did say drastic. Not graphic. No, you can. When you uh, sub six months in advance, you get hype train. You, you get resubs when you get resubs. It's absolutely worth it subscribing in advance if you intend to still be here in six months because, frankly, you save money. So, yes, it is. Do I have a dwarf of your own? Nope. Why would I? That seems like a waste of a dwarf. Why would I intentionally kill myself for no reason? That's your job, chat. Come on.
You don't know how to sub in advance? There's an option when you're subscribing to subscribe six months in advance and you get a small discount. Don't really know Twitch mechanics well? Hype trains are a scam. Don't worry about them. They're just an excuse to remind streamer to give you money or to give streamer money. Um, and uh, sub in advance because you, you save money. And it doesn't cost me, and it doesn't give me less money. Can you have a dwarf, please? No! What kind of dwarf do you want? Beard or no beard? You're trying. Are just meant to milk your wallet? If you saw my, my wallet, you would realize that it doesn't have any tits on it, or udders for that matter, and is utterly impossible to be milked because there's not that much in it most of the time. And with the exception of December 2022, I ain't rich. Not even remotely close to being rich. And, um... No, it's not an excuse to milk your wallet. It's just a reminder that, hey, streamer needs tips, right? Think about it this way. Very few people, or way less people, would tip at restaurants if there wasn't an option on the debit machine to tip. Think about it this way. It's a reminder that, hey, if you like this content, maybe throw a buck in that guy's direction at some point. Doesn't need to be today, or at that exact moment. It's all about how the person who's running it manages it. No beard? K. Okay. Uh, how about this wood burner? Jimmy Neutron is uh, dislikes helping others and can get caught up in internal deliberations when action is necessary. She is very greedy and likes to present herself modestly, even if it would offend the average sense of modesty. Uh, she finds the rules of etiquette to be valuable in the abstract and is stubborn and is curious and eager to learn and doesn't handle stress well. She has an active sense of humor and when she gets excited, she is, she, uh, it's, e it's easy to tell because she drums her fingers. She needs alcohol to get through the working day and doesn't mind being outdoors at least for a time. And she doesn't really care about anything anymore. Dreams of creating a great work of art and personally respects those that observe decorum and maintain their dignity, values uh, tranquility, and a peaceful day. Uh, likes marble and bismuth and dendric agate and cedar wood, giant peach face, lovebird tooth, and the color cream. Uh, the words of the fuchsia satin and the sound of the ivory diamond and the sight of the luxury of trading when possible prefers to consume blue jay and guava wine and caper leaves and absolutely hates purring maggots. You're a talented wood burner. Kashmir is uh, your, one of two of your passing acquaintances, and you're a member of the South Creed, which is a religion. It's okay, I ignore most questions because all of them are off topic. There's no such thing as an on topic question when you have no topic to ignore. Also, how is world generation off topic? I've noticed that even going through and maxing out secrets doesn't necessarily create a lot of towers. Um, it's because it's evil. I think it's because evil increases the amount of available land for sieves decrease. Do you have tips on min-maxing towers? Nope. Because I know almost nothing about advanced world gen. Everything I know about advanced world gen is uh, already shown in the uh, advanced world gen tutorials I have, which are not extensive and very minimal. So, nope. I, I do not actually have any tips for such a subject. It's something that I've always, like, kind of refused to do with my tutorials, is if I don't understand how something works, I don't tutorialize it. It's like the difference between me and a lot of people who make tutorials on YouTube, is I only make tutorials on things that I'm versed in or interested in learning. And pretty quickly, you'll figure out what things I'm not interested in learning in this game, because you'll never find a tutorial and I'll be like, nope, every time somebody asks. So, it's probably one of my biggest uh, flaws in a way, but at the same time, Got to keep some things functional, you know? Let's 
So are you just like slowly filling up with boulders? Is that what's happening? I need to stare at this and figure out exactly why this sucker's not working. You seem very vanilla with this game. I'm extremely offended. Very upset. Disagree with your statement and think what you say is silly and I dismiss it as disgusting, offensive, and f f quite frankly, rude. Uh, were you given a dwarf by anybody, Red Rail? Because I don't think you were, unless I missed it. A uh, human uh, caravan from Anthath Luth has come. Interesting. Mostly I think that necromancers are already o OP and over spawn like crazy already, so I just don't even bother trying to figure out how to increase them because there's already too many of them. Why would I try and increase something that there's already too many of? And that runs back down now that these are up here. Well, I mean, everything I just said was sarcasm. So. <laughs> if you think I'm being serious about 99% of the things that I'm saying, then I got news for you, I'm not. <laughs> I just kind of say shit. New to the channel? Yep. Yeah, and you either need to have a dwarf uh, gifted to you by another chat member, or you need to um, redeem one yourself which has to be done through channel points. And I, I don't see any channel point redemptions, which means you don't have one. Which is fine. It happens. You'll get there. It's really funny. I very quickly learn who's capable of reading my sarcasm and who isn't in this channel. Because if somebody gets mad and leaves, they're definitely not capable of reading my sarcasm. At which point I immediately feel bad generally, but it also at the same time, don't really feel bad, I guess, is maybe the best way to put it. Okay, so you are going to be given to Neutron. And you, right there, are going to go to Dishmab. This right here is going to be another bedroom. You love my sarcasm and sassiness? I think it's one of my biggest, like, faults, actually. <laughs> At least in this industry, it's it's certainly one of my biggest faults. It's because, like, I stream kind of niche games, right? So if I make a bad impression for somebody, uh, then they're immediately gone and will never come back, and that's basically just how life works. If you make a bad impression with somebody on the internet, congratulations, you just fucked that one up forever. Um, and uh, I have a bad habit of doing that. How vulnerable some 20-somethings can be, at least uh, I was. Vulnerable, hey? Well, as a 30-year-old dude who understands that people can be delicate, I think that one of the biggest issues with the internet right now is two twofold things. Well, three things, actually. The entirety of the internet is trying to teach you that um, all feedback is trolls and don't trust or feed trolls. That's the first thing that the internet's trying to teach you. The second thing is that everybody who says everything is serious and means personal offense against you specifically if they say something even remotely um, unexpected. And I think that that's a damn shame because the only re real it result is everybody loses. You guys get worse content and I, you know, can't speak my mind. So anyway, now we have iron bars. Let's um, go down here. And go metalsmith. 
also, trust me, I don't forget. I just, there's a... Okay, I'm going to be very, very brutally honest right now. I, if, if I say something that I consider to be extremely sarcastic and either A, mildly funny, or B, amusing, and someone gets mad at that because I'm being mean, then I state I'm being sarcastic, and if they've already left, well, s sucks to be, be, be them. Uh, it's not really my problem. It's only a problem in that it can, you know, cause people to stop watching the stream, which is a problem by definition. However, at the end of the day, while I do care, I only really care to a point. Okay, so Coke is separate from coal. So then where the hell is coal? It's bitumous coal. So where is coke then? Is it even in this damn thing? It's not like tools or something nonsensical like that, is it? Enjoy your looks there, Nicholas. This is the longest discussion about a joke I've had in a minute. The day sarcasm becomes illegal is the day that I retire from the internet. because the internet won't be worth uh, interacting with anymore on that day. I didn't realize that Elkbird antlers had their own icon. That must be new. Do I think humor should have limits? Absolutely. Like public decency should have limits. But I don't think being mildly sarcastic is uh, a limit. <laughs> like, there's... I, I'm being mildly sarcastic, and apparently that's, like, attracting this discussion about how, oh, some people are delicate... Oh, fuck this nonsense. <laughs> like, what the hell? Come on. What planet do you live on? <laughs> Do you think humor should have limits? <sighs> like I said, this is the longest discussion about me being slightly sarcastic that I've ever had. Put the disclaimer in that I was being sarcastic and we're now have discussed humor and whether or not uh, humor should have limits. And I'm just a little bit all question marks right now, I'll be honest. Let's change the topic. Oh, we should have. Uh, before this one even started. But, you know, that's besides the point. Poor Ulfsire. His only son, JJ, died. <laughs> Hopefully it was a good lunch. Ulfi has been the most distressed dwarf or stressed dwarf in a, for a while, and it's literally because his kid died, which I think is legitimate.
Oh, because I never put a single tile of horizontal axle right there. Well, makes sense. Mine are doing the same as yours. Uh, I had some leaves on one of them that I had to prune off. And uh, the ones on my neighbor's patio have grown quite considerably, and I had to prune them a bunch yesterday. Well, Brugan, when you're playing the game on your own time, you're more than welcome to kill your own dwarves with no logical reasoning behind them. I choose not to play the video game that way. Dwarves are not punished with unfortunate ac accidents. Dwarves' lives are worth more than that. Sounds tasty. I don't know what I'm having for lunch today. I also didn't make a sandwich today because I haven't been very hungry around lunchtime. So I'll probably just eat around five or six whenever I finish stream. You shat, the dwarven child has created a uh, Vanum Dosin. Oh, it's the handheld uh, one piece instrument. It's like a basically, it's, it's sort of like a, um, what's it called? Not a. Harm it's kind of like a harmonica thing. Uh, it is uh, decorated with forgotten beast bone and circled with bands of chestnut and. Uh, Round brilliant cut shell opals and iron. This object menaces with spikes of shell opal and cave swallow bone. On the item is an image of a pecan tree and rock salt. On an item is an image of fence silks, uh, the mechanical theater, the large black metal right mitten and shell opal. Uh, the denast is a mid-sized handheld wind instrument consisting of nine adjacent conical pipes. Well, it's well, okay, less, less of a harmonica and more of like the tube things. Uh, the musician blows into the fipple at the end, which is a funny word, will always be a funny word, uh, of each pipe and and the instrument has a four octave range going from low to high pitch. And the instrument has a strained, quavering, nasally timber. Uh, slime made uh, raised beds last summer, uh, but we get blasted by the sun on that hill, so anything that survived the raccoons soon became crispy. I mean, being blasted with sun is real good for certain types of plants. Tomatoes are one of them. But yeah, I mean, you still have to fight against the raccoons. Sad amount of bookcases. Okay, so bars, we got 47 iron. Let's do a check, shall we? So we need greaves and gauntlets is what we need. Greaves and gauntlets. I'll just do 10 of each of those. And then I'm going to go into here and I'm going to say make steel bar. Let's say do 10 of those and um, make pig iron. And also 10 of those. A grievous lack of greaves. Well, it's probably causing the dwarves many grievous wounds. 
Oh, shit. Everybody has quarters. Well, ain't that great. I got extra bedrooms now. So we're going to go along here. And keep some more ex uh, some more air quotes extra bedrooms. Also, in, in regards to people being fragile, I, I think that it's totally acceptable for people to have limits when it comes to things like humor, topics of discussion and whatnot. But if you go onto the internet with the expectation that you are going to be 100% respected 100% of the time, <sighs> it's like you're going into the realm of anonymity with the entirety of the planet. Like, I just kind of turn on my computer like maybe it's because of the industry that I work in but I turn on my computer every day and expect somebody to tell me to die at some point like it's it is just a thing that I expect slash accept and maybe that's a toxic relationship to have with something in fact I guarantee you it is it is probably not healthy to a degree but at the end of the day if you go into a environment that has the capabilities and quite frankly quite quite frankly uh, literal possibility, if not a, a thing to be expected, that it's going to be relatively hostile in some sense. If you go into a space kind of accepting that, then things that are somewhat hostile end up feeling a lot less severe. And I think that learning how to have a thicker skin earlier in life is actually healthy. Like, boundaries are healthy, as annoying as they can be for a lot of reasons. But at the same time, the expectation that everybody is going to know your boundaries in an anonymous setting is ridiculous to accept. And that goes for me too, you know, like, I, and I'm also guilty of this. Like, in the past, like, I've gotten frustrated with people breaking rules when, like, you know, or, like, enforcing uh, rules on people that maybe, well, it doesn't help that I don't really make them obvious as to their location or how somebody could figure out the rules of this channel in the first place. So that's also my fault. But like, really, if somebody comes in and is just being weird in a way that bothers the chat, you have to like explain that in a smart way. I completely forgot that I even had that command. You hit me, hold on. This channel doesn't have rules. It's mostly just act like an adult and use common sense and don't be a douchebag. It's the only, like, headcanon rules I have, so. But quite literally, we don't really have rules. They're just kind of... How do I word this? Something that you need to use a little bit of your brain. Gonna manually dump all of this stuff. As it turns out, I've got a lot of random skeletons everywhere. Legendary? Mm, I don't know about legendary. Amusing for a bit? Certainly. Having seen Illstorm three times, I wouldn't call them legendary. They're a fun gimmick, though. But I hold pretty steadily at that, which is what it is. A, a fun gimmick for a bit. It's gonna make my life easier. Hellstorm also have some pretty questionable practices regarding their female fans. Well, as a male fan, I don't really know. Great effing show. Yeah, I think I would pass on Glory Hammer. Like, the, pro the problem that I have with power metal is I've seen a lot of metal over the years. Consistently the worst shows I've ever been to. 
and this is from the perspective of somebody who's seen a lot of metal, so this probably doesn't count for everybody. But from the perspective of somebody who's seen a lot of metal shows, power metal shows are generally the worst musical performances I see within the metal genre. Which isn't to say that they're bad, necessarily. It's that they are poor musical performances. I go to see metal to see musical performances. I think a lot of people go to see metal to see, like, a show. And if that's all that you care about, bands like Ailstorm put on a pretty great show. I want to see a musical performance. I mean, they are a band of all time with a fun gimmick that's fun to see once every couple years as, like, a joke, right? But they're a gimmick band with a successful gimmick, but they're still a gimmick band, right? And gimmick bands are only as good as their gimmick. And the gimmick of pirate metal, pretty okay. But the band itself, hmm. You want to see Blind Guardian? I would like to see Tear again, because Tear was pretty good. Uh, Sabaton generally puts on a pretty good show. I can't speak to Blind Guardian, as I've never seen them. That being said, I'm sure they put on a solid show. Thoughts on Guar? Meh. <laughs> meh. I've seen them four times. Meh. Pretty heavy meh. Like, are you asking me musically or gimmick-wise? Because their gimmick's pretty cool. But once you've seen the gimmick, you've seen their gimmick. If you've seen a Guar show, you've seen all of the Guar shows. My favorite dumb piece of Guar lore, though, is probably the fact that they designed the first ever Microsoft Direct X booth at uh, CES, which is genuinely hysterical to me and probably one of the greatest unspoken pieces of, like, video game history ever. Fun... I... I don't know if I'd say that they're fun live shows. Sticky live shows? I'll say sticky. I guess for me, Guar is like, if I'm going to go to a show and get covered with liquids, I'd rather go see Ramstein. Because at least I would enjoy that show. I'm, thinking, I'm trying to think of other bands or shows that I would go to where I'd get covered in fake blood and like, alien jizz um actually i would go see sean or not sean of the dead um uh, but, 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 but not dawn of the dead what's evil dead the musical i would go see that again over uh seeing guar have you never seen, like, okay, if, if you don't know who, who Guar is, you might want to look them up, and the alien jizz and fake blood might make more sense. <laughs> Keyword there is might. It, it might make more, it might not make more sense. You haven't been to a live show in the 2020s, uh, went to one late 2018, and your dad got straight up roofied. You know, I, I don't know what people do to have that stuff happen, because, like, like I, I empathize. That sucks. Don't get me wrong. Like that, 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 that is awful that your dad got roofied. But, like, how the fuck does that happen? I've been going to shows, like, multiple times a month since, with the exception of, like, the 2020s. Uh, like 2021, 2022, I didn't go to any shows, but like I, I j on average go to like, I don't know, a couple dozen shows a year. I've never been drugged, period. Maybe it's the venues I go to, maybe it's the bands I see, but like, 
I I always hear about like these horror stories of like, oh, I went to go see one band once and got drugged and I've never done it again. It's like, well, how, what, what are you doing? <laughs> like that you can, that that can happen. What band did, who did you see? Did you go to a rave? Like what, what in the world? I believe it's not a pleasant experience. I mean, I've certainly gotten too drunk before, but like, yeah, I don't know. I'm always, I guess, just mildly amazed at that. There's also like the thing where if you tried to drug somebody at the shows I go to, um, you would die. You wouldn't make it out alive. They would probably kill you. And trust me, I'm not joking. <laughs> not the band, uh, but other random fans. Metalheads do not take kindly to people trying to do shit like that. I initially read that like a mosh pit of metalheads, not, uh, I, I, I meant that, read that as the negative initially, Elfie. <laughs> I was like, really? Where'd you, what? And the prosthetic penis uh, today I learned uses now, d d uh, Tilly uses now? I mean, fa fair. I, I don't know why, why you're reading about prosthetic penises, but, you know. Till the lead singer. Sure, but, like, what's the point of having a prosthetic penis if you don't make it bigger every show? Anyway, got drugged at a club once. That's a club. So you managed to just leave. Well, that sucks. Stay safe, though. I saw a metal show last year. I think this was last year. I saw a show last year. I'm pretty sure it was last year. And um, it was at a place in Victoria called the Sticky Wicket, which has a nightclub underneath it. And in that nightclub, the first band who played was a band uh, that is local to the area called Torify. And he popped onto the microphone and goes, man, look at this beautiful crowd of metalheads. <sighs> People, partners, friends, families. And he points at like a group of people that kind of looked like it was like a dad and his kid. And then says, it's probably the safest an open drink has ever been in this club. Like ever. And he just smiles for a second and goes, Oh, wait, I wasn't supposed to say that. And then he just starts playing the first song. It's a pre pre pretty good time. Because there was just, like, open drinks everywhere. If anybody was a bad person in there, somebody would have gotten drugged, but... Forge Iron Greaves. Look at that. Greaves and Gauntlets. Yeah, Zoom. You need to fight and learn something? Do you now? Do you remember mastering a skill? Well. How about you here, peasant? I'm gonna create a great work of art. How about you? You're in Deridius. How about you? At here. Great work of art. You're trying to attend a meeting. You also dream of mastering a skill. What do you want to do? Be with friends. You want to fight, learn something. Unsustainable of internal rage. Just thoughtless. I realize that you're a scholar, but. Had cheap beer and vodka, which should be a red flag. Like I said, that's most clubs. I realize I'm very dismissive when I say that it's a club, but it's... 
not really a running joke, but I don't know. For for me, like safety at concerts is entirely like based on the venues that you frequent. If you frequent venues that focus at that and that focus on and have crowds that are focused on uh, crowd safety, you're very safe. If you go to shows and venues that don't, mm, should be obvious, I think. Infinity, hello. It's good to see you. I hope that you are doing well. But yes, also all caps, what is this conversation? <laughs> I I feel you there, man. Okay, so does this go below here at any point? You go up. You go all the way up and out. How about along here? You go here. Up, 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 along here, down, down, up. So this area right here needs a separate drain. going all right today. This entire conversation just made you even less interested in going to concerts. Cool. Less tickets to sell it for me. I think the, pro the funny thing to me about concerts, though, like just as somebody who goes to a lot of concerts, the thing that I find genuinely hysterical about concerts is how often I have people asking me about, how can you afford to go to concerts? They're so expensive. It's like, I don't go to expensive concerts. <laughs> it's literally that simple. I just simply do not attend shows that charge me, like, more than a reasonable price for tickets. And if you charge more than a reasonable price for tickets, I'm so unsold on going to your show that I just forgot that you even exist as a group, artist, band, singer, performing thing, person, etc. Uh, what am I building? I'm building a drowning room to make people chug river water. I also have a lot of other things that I need to do in this fort. Such as make more bedrooms, among other things. It's also time to pause a bunch of jobs. Keep the making iron gauntlets going. Leave you running, leave you running, leave you running, leave you running. Yeah, all right. A lot more jobs that can be done now. Why am I building a drowning room to force dwarves to chug water? Why would I be calling it a drowning room then? Wouldn't it be a drinking room? Why? And also, why would I be forcing my dwarves to chug water? We have 751 in alcohol. No, these, these two, these, this is not a chamber for my dwarves. This is a chamber for the enemy. Because it would be absurd to presume that the stuff that I'm building right now is for my own dwarves. Still, to me, one of the funniest, like, 
can problems that people run into with this game. And I realize that it's probably kind of mean and prob someone's probably going to perceive this as super elitist me finding this funny. But the funniest, just as somebody who plays this game a lot, the funniest, like, help, I need, I can't figure out how to. It's like, help, how do I get my dwarves more water? We've, like, everything is frozen because it's winter time. It's like, well, water, you say. <laughs> I realize that if you play this game for a while, it becomes very self-explanatory that dwarves don't need water. But, like, so funny to me. Like, genuinely so funny. But, um, I'm doing all right. Uh, Kashmir is trying to give Brugen a dwarf. Chat, does Brugen deserve to be dwarfed? Oh, dude, yeah. fuck you. My, my favorite yes, equivalent, yes, because this was talked about in the YouTube chat like 30 minutes ago, is what happens if dwarves don't drink booze, period? Do they do die from a thrall? It's like, imagine if you as a human, because I'm assuming you're a human, my, my apologies, but imagine if you as a human were forced to drink nothing but vinegar. That's been the equivalent that I've always been told. All right, so Brugen, do you want a dwarf with a beard or a dwarf without a beard? Would you like a male dwarf or a female dwarf? You have like 95 seconds to respond. And then we'll go from there. Also, Shy, would you like to see your dwarf? Since you voted nay. You're uh, a doctor and you're hauling some pigtail currently. Storing items in barrels, even. They're currently hauling multiple pigtails. Only vinegar. And let's just say for the sake of this discussion, apple cider vinegar. Which was attracted no migrants this season. No. God damn it. I'm sure it sucked, just like most things for ancient Romans. All right, so since um, our friend here doesn't appear to be paying too much attention, uh, chat room, do we think that this dwarf is a dwarf with a beard or a dwarf without a beard? For Brugen. We'll let chat decide. NB, all right. Uh, Abel, Ablel is going to be the dwarf. Once I click it. Also, nice on the capitalizations. Yo, at me, holo. Makes things easier to decipher. Wait. So feedback moment. For those of you who've subscribed to or have been reading the blog, what did you think of the post this week? Did I do a good job? Question mark. If you're curious, exclamation point blog and look at the most recent post. Engagement has been kind of great on them, but it's probably because it's a new thing more than anything. But I'm curious. Twas well written. I'll just take that compliment and not comment on it because I, I don't agree. But, you know, it's, it's fine. Irritated when thirsty. Well. Well. Brugen. Is. A dwarf of being confident under pressure. She is very impolite and inconsiderate of property and doesn't seek out excitement and it can easily fall in love or develop positive feelings. Has a tendency to go alone without considering the advice of others. 
And she is really moved, and she's really happy or enthusiastic, and she is uh, conflicted by this, as she values parties and merrymaking in the abstract. She's not particularly curious about the world, and she has a greedy streak. Uh, she has a noticeable lack of perseverance, and she can be very humble. She tends to be swayed by the emotions of others, and she can occasionally overindulge. She tends to hang on to grievances, and she often feels lustful. Uh, she is somewhat uncomfortable around those that appear unusual or live differently from herself, and she tends to make a small mess with her own possessions. She always takes a deep breath whenever she's surprised, and she dreams of mastering a skill and personally values artwork. Uh, she likes andesite copper and golden barrel and floating guts and parchment. Gloating fl floating guts parchment and rings and yaks for their shaggy hair and the uh, eagle men for their high soaring and the sound of the zephyr of glimmers and when possible prefers to consume barn owl and mog hopper and funio beer and absolutely hates lizards and I'm just going to continue forbidding stuff because I'm going to have more jobs popping up and actually no we'll just get all of these that's fine I, I don't need all these steel bars and iron bars and things I'm just slowly going to start forbidding stuff because I've got a lot of construction that needs doing and um, not a lot of dwarves so Look at this. Always satisfying. What's up, Bobtron? How are you? <laughs> but it was pretty well done. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll honestly take that. I mean, it's uh, or, or like better than expected is also a thing I'd take. Yeah, I don't know. I um. I'm pretty happy with how it's been turning out so far, and I'm also pretty happy with the response to it. So, it's just, it's interesting to do something like this because it's not something that many people in the, in my industry do, if that makes any sense. Like, it's pretty common that, you know, people make YouTube videos. It's pretty common that people stream. It's pretty common that people post on social media and have an Instagram account and make TikToks and all that cancerous nonsense. But, like, you don't generally see people like me in my line of work making, you know videos about or like posting on a blog you don't really see that super often so i like to think it's making me a bit unique right now you like to talk about paradox they're uh they're a little smaller but don't re really and don't really get a lot of attention for good reason <laughs> i don't i don't know if they're smaller they're about as big as you can be without being a mainstream AAA publisher I don't know if I'd call them smaller, but literally the first game ever you, you ever made, or ever, you ever played, really? Not mainstream? Sure. We can agree to disagree on. I think that, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I well, Let's agree to disagree on that. Let's let's agree to disagree on that because like, are they Slytherin? Not quite, but they're about almost as mainstream as Firaxis. Like we're talking games that sell millions of copies. That's and like the Space 4X game, right? And like the City Builder franchise that is popular right now. So I don't know. I would call them pretty mainstream. And our outpost liaison has arrived, and Kyle is making an artifact. So it's trading time. Da 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 da. I'm just going to sell all clothing, basically. Anything that isn't made of metal, I'm going to sell. They're about as big as you, like, they, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, for me, 
they're kind of the equivalent of you know like a 505 games if not bigger at this point I mean, they would really like to be mainstream, which is why they tried to make a Sims clone and why they tried to make, you know, a, um, well, a, like an indie publishing label and why they tried to, you know, replicate lightning in a bottle multiple times. And, you know, they tried to build a Civ competitor. They tried to make a, uh, a Sims competitor. It's because they managed to get SimCity's money, um... They're, they have been trying for a while to replicate lightning in a bottle twice, and I don't think they're going to fully pull it off, but, you know, is what it is. I also have a slab I got a place, but Cyanide's body got buried, so it became lower priority when that happened. All right, got a lot of stuff to trade, so let's get to it. We'll do fine with games like Stellaris. Uh, maybe read my blog post and understand the base of that concept. It's a niche that they've absolutely nailed to a tree. Totally. But that wasn't really the point of the discussion. Or what any of that has to do with your little idiot. Not dead yet, I can tell you that much. About the same. Frustrated, you want to pray. You want to, you're resentful because you suffered an injury. You don't have any friends and you're sad about it. And you want to craft this thing. Craft a thing, shall we say. Ah, yeah, there you go. Oh, I'm, I'm, I was just talking about how uh, Paradox trying to expand is making them into a hated company because that was a, a portion of my blog from today. Or from yesterday, I guess. Is your dwarf dead yet? Of course. You always ask for dwarves that are inevitably going to die, so yes, you are in fact dead. Total War is a very, very different kind of game and very different kind of strategy game to Paradox's grand strategy games. Like, one is a strategy game, and the other one is, like, an instance-based RTS with a very light strategy layer. Who's next on the chopping block? Uh, not you, because you died today, so... Who is who is next on the chopping block? You tell me. I've uh, been getting into Dwarf Fortress recently, and you're coming uh, from RimWorld. You've been watching some of your tutorials and your entertainment for your nights... for tonight's night shift. Well, hey. Eventually, the entertained becomes the entertainer. I used to listen to Twitch streams on my night shift as well. Back when I worked a real job, you're currently playing CK3. I'm sorry for your loss. I, I don't know why that's always my default response, but I hope you're having a good time, UGPY. <laughs> but I don't know. Kokoroko, you got to tell me, man. I'm waiting on your response. What's up, Taigo? Provider's backup electricity died. Ugh. That seems bad. Oh no, I'm not, here, here's, here's the thing, right? Hans Horst from the YouTube chat. Just because I say something isn't good doesn't mean that you can't enjoy it. And just because I say something could be better doesn't mean that you can't enjoy it. A lot of people take criticism of things that they like as an attack on themselves and or a like condemning of the fact that nobody can ever enjoy this. No, that's completely false. Uh, Kokoroko. Um, so I'm not gonna give you another dwarf. You died today. You can gift that to somebody else if you like, or um, 
I can refund it. That, that's your choice. If, if your dwarf died same day, I'm, I, I don't rename dwarves the same day. At least give them a day to rest first. Like, they, you literally died at the start of the stream. Like, I, I can't help you there, mate. No, that's chat's job, UDK. Come on. Uh, Hans Worst gets a dwarf, then. It's the first name I see on YouTube, and you can be the really angry child. Who's apparently repeatedly crying and yelling at a priest. Hans Worst is recoverable. Uh, has modest quarters. And is uh, nine years old. He feels strong need to pay back any favor done for him. He is very greedy and he dislikes receiving advice, preferring to keep his own counsel as he... Uh, uh, mm, preferring to keep his own counsel. He is intellectually stubborn and rarely changing his mind during a debate regardless of its merits, and he is generally quite confident in his abilities when undertaking specific ventures. He doesn't often experience strong cravings or urges, and he tends to uh, ex uh, avoid any physical confrontations. He works to square this natural tendency with his respect of martial prowess, and he prefers to present himself modestly he generally acts impartially and is rarely moved to mercy and generally acts uh, and he is rarely moved to mercy and he doesn't handle stress well he tends to share his ex own experiences and thoughts with others and uh, he tries to do things correctly each time and he is quick to anger and isn't particularly ambitious he does not go out of his way to help others and when he's thinking he has a tendency to chew on his cheek he licks his lips when he's nervous and needs alcohol to get through the working day and dreams of raising a family and personally believes that perseverance is one of the greatest qualities that somebody can have believes that hard work is one of the highest ideals and the key to a good life and sees power over others as something to strive for he finds Heart artwork boring and sees competition as reasonably important. And his uh, family is Yushat, his younger sister, Skywell, and uh, Moldath, and he has a pet KV. Welcome to the fort. You heard he comes to your house and pisses in your coffee? I would never desecrate coffee like that. I refuse to acknowledge this slander. Tea, on the other hand, I might, I might desecrate. But I respect coffee too much to do that. That's already piss, so how could I, like, desecrate something that's already desecrated the mug that it resides in? Like, pissing in piss is just... It's just, it's all piss all the way down. Uh, some dwarves are very, 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 very conflicted and don't have any real convictions. So it depends on the dwarf. Shy. Don't you dare desecrate my tea. <laughs> Got it. I won't. <laughs> Hold on a second. I need to go desecrate the toilet. I will be back in a moment. Let's take a lovely fruit, the tomato. Remove everything that's good from it, the seeds, the vitamins, the, the nutrients, everything that's good about it, and just jam it full of shit garbage shit sugar and put it in a shit bottle that sounds like shit when you put it on your shit. It's shit! Stop eating ketchup! Meh. I bumped into my monitor while walking past. Whoa, oh, dude, fuck yeah, yeah, you, dude, this yeah, is yeah. fucking sick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo! Blah, 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 blah. Some, something like that. I mean, sometimes it's good to name a shield, right? We only need an, an additional $20 in stream, re stream revenue for uh, myself to... Um, 
uh, m make it to my month to, to my daily minimum. Uh, this for this is a, um, a a great mole bone shield. All crafts worship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with giant cave swallow bone and rope and rope reed and encircled with bands of giant mole bone and steel. This object menaces with spikes of claystone. On the item is an image of Bone Saw, the dwarf in steel. And you know, I think he's still ready, chat. And uh, they ask me if I would like royalty, and I say no, and then I move on with my day. UDK! Okay, first off, you get to uh, pick a dwarf to be named. But second off, thank you very much for that uh, sub subscription gift. That is the first uh, subscription gift in... Uh, okay, it's the first subscription in an hour and 25 minutes. It is the first subscription gift in... I'm scrolling. Hold on. Still scrolling. Hold up. Still scrolling. Still scrolling. Still scrolling. Uh, four hours. Thank you for helping streamer pay bills. Get fucking dwarfed, big boys. Let's go. <laughs> Queue up those work orders. Designate those taverns. Raise the bridges and trap the forgotten beasts. W O. Sorry, just right, right there. You see, Cashmere figured it out. Uh, <laughs> had that timed and ready, eh? Um, Vaka, thank you very much for the six months. What's up, dude? Um, and, uh, so, so UDK gets to pick somebody, and, and so do, uh, so do you fucking donkey. So I'm just gonna make this easy. Because you already have one, UDK. Uh, first person I see in YouTube chat to type in Penelope. Cashmere zero at cheer. Gets a door. X200. I mean, it was pretty funny and unexpected, Merlin Buff, if nothing else. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to go by name order. Drew! I'm just going to name you Drew because I don't... That looks like a first name, last name. Uh, we're just going to go with Drew. And Drew never envies others in their status, situation, or possessions. Is not driven and rarely feels the need to pursue even a modest success and always is tense and jittery. Uh, desires little for herself in the way of possessions and lacks any confidence in her abilities and tends to form only tenuous emotional bonds with others. Is trusting and isn't particularly curious about the world and does not easily hate or develop negative feelings. Tends to avoid any physical confrontations and works to square natural tendency with her respect of martial prowess. Because you're getting a, a dwarf, which is why you're typing Penelope. Um, it starts talking to herself. It's one of those, like, check to see who's listening kind of things. Uh, she starts talking to herself when she becomes exasperated, and she shakes her finger up and down when she's excited. She needs alcohol to get through the working day and does not mind being outdoors at least for a time and doesn't really care about anything anymore. Uh, dreams of crafting a masterwork someday, and this dream was realized, and personally believes that those... Uh, that the... Hmm, believes that the that those that take leisure time are evil and finds the whole idea disgusting and has great respect for fairness. I think that this dwarf wants to be a like tech CEO. Imagine taking leisure time. You are evil if you have, according to this dwarf. Um, likes Billin and Green Jade and Paradise Nut Wood and Green Glass and Sea Lamprey Tooth. The color Ivory Breastplates and Guinea Fowls for their social nature. The sight of the Diamond Silver and when possible prefers to consume wheat beer and hates lizards. You work at a Taco Bell? Do they work at the Taco Bell with you? Cause that seems a little messed up. You really got a shover, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chat, did you know that you can get number three on the leaderboard by cheering one bit? Push the hype mine cart. Push if you che cheer a single push. bit, it'll get you number three on the leaderboard. So, uh, because we have another gift that we need to check out here, this is Flaxert. I'm going to give Flaxert a dwarf. Uh, Flaxert, what kind of dwarf do you want? Beard, please. Cap. 
Pure vat it is. You want to be with friends, of which you have none, but we're working on that. He is incredibly brave in the face of looming danger, perhaps a bit foolhardily. Is a bit is extremely confident in himself in situations requiring his skills. He finds obligations confining, though he is conflicted by this for more than one reason. He thinks he is fairly important in the grand scheme of things, and generally finds himself to be quite hopeful about the future. He tends to not be swayed by emotional appeals. Is often cheerful. Does not have a does not often feel lustful, and has a calm demeanor. He prefers that everyone lives as harmoniously as possible, and is not particularly curious about the world. He rarely feels discouraged. Has a greedy streak, and is trusting. And winks when he's nervous, and he is when he gets distracted. Uh, he gets distracted during conversations when he's excited and he needs alcohol to get through the working day uh he dreams of creating a great work of art and personally values a harmonious existence and sees life as unfair and doesn't mind it that way values romance and does not care about family one way or another uh he likes tetrahedrite steel and harley quinn opal and bloodthorn wood and giant moose antler and um uh, low boots and thrones and coins and llamas for their jutting teeth and the sound of the zephyr of glimmers and when possible prefers to consume pomeg peregrine falcon pomegranate falcon what yellow bullhead and whip wine and blue weed blade weed seeds not blue weed blade weed seeds mm -hmm. and uh, has a very long beard which is braided and uh, has no friends and for groups is a member of the tactical creed hangman also requested a dwarf uh, hangman any requests? Likes the rural hunter vibe, you know, Flaxer? Or like the Gaston vibe, maybe. You're into the Gaston aesthetic, you know? I don't know if that's a positive aesthetic to have, but. Also, you snipe Dave, that's cool. Long time patron, Dave. But uh, any requests, Hangman? Basically, beard or no beard here. I can check your chat logs and see. Anonymous has checked out a gift. Well, hmm. Okay, so um, today we're doing a, a one-off sale, sort of, Hangman, where if you gift a subscription, you get a dwarf. Or I can give a dwarf to somebody because I'm trying to get all these dwarves named so I can increase the population. <laughs> Basically. Same goes for you, Laya. I give? Okay. I give dwarf to... Hmm. Vaka. Vaka Studio. Will it just be random out? We could just name him Brad Pitt. Uh, Vodka dislikes receiving advice, preferring to keep his own counsel. Sounds like me. Uh, is quick to anger. Also sounds like me. Uh, is moved by art and natural beauty and is troubled by this since he dislikes the natural world. He is uh, quick to view negative views about things and he likes to take it easy. Shakes his finger up and down when he's trying to remember something and needs alcohol to get through the working day. Dreams of creating a great work of art and personally views competition as a crucial driving force in the world. Sees sacrifice wasteful and foolish and values decorum, dignity and proper behavior. Likes magnetite, silver, and dendric agate, as well as uh, giant black mamba bone and gems, bolts, and hatch covers and kestrels for their hunting hunting prowess. 30 seconds left on the live train. Uh, and prefers that to consume giant gray squirrel, bilberry wine, bumblebee, honey, and soft wheat flour. Giant black and um, your mom and dad are Elfie Bean and Maple. Cashmere by the zero way. it cheered X four hundred push. Cashmere is doing all the work here, chat. Appreciate you, Cashmere. Um, and you saw Goblin's dead body and you don't feel anything. Uh, Laya, uh, you, you've qualified for a free dwarf because you gave me money, which definitely makes it not free. But you paid me money, so thus, because of the one-off sale for today, I'm giving out dwarfs for every gifted sub. So, 
Laya, do you have any requests for dwarf? I don't think you have one. No, you don't. So, any dwarf for you? Uh, Moldath B. Laya. Never feels discouraged, takes offer to help and gifts without feeling particularly grateful, can occasionally lose focus on the matter at hand, and is quick to anger and could be considered rude. Uh, can handle stress and um, uh, and uh, enjoys the company of others. Does not go out of her way to help others and is very humble. Needs alcohol to get through the working day and doesn't really care about anything anymore. Dreams of mastering a skill and does not care and personally does not doesn't care about nature one way or another. Go to your room, you're grounded, you get no allow allowance, and go get a job. Ah, you mean, here, have a pickaxe? Now begin <clears throat> yearning. You know what to do. Anyway. Uh, this dwarf right here uh, likes mudstone, iron, shell, opal, and the color cream. Tables and earrings and the wings of the sparkling, uh, the wisps of sparkling, and when possible, prefers to consume sheep cheese, sweet potato wine, and rock nut oil. And hates slugs. Um, you're a member of the competitive order, and you're blissful after a very good bedroom. There's allegedly a dead goblin around here somewhere, and it's kind of starting to disturb me a little bit. <laughs> because everybody's seeing a dead goblin constantly. UDK 450 cheered. X 200. Thanks for the shove, UDK. Appreciate you. First thing... I think that's everything. Well, I, I mean, there was an anonymous one. So let's just say... Ezum, you are now... Um... Hmm. We have a shadow broker. Um, is a shadow broker a specific thing from a thing that I'm not immediately familiar with and thus feel silly? Let's call this dwarf. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Grumpy. Grumpy isn't very grumpy and has a very calm demeanor and generally is unhindered by the thoughts of others concerning her actions. Excuse me. Um, and uh, she isn't particularly ambitious and she has a tendency to go it alone without considering the advice of others. She is a friendly individual and she doesn't seek out excitement. She needs alcohol to get through the working day and likes working outdoors and only grumbles mildly at bad weather. Doesn't really care about anything anymore. Dreams of mastering a skill. Personally finds artwork boring and sees no value in holding back complaints and concealing emotions. Uh, likes lead, lace, agate, and amber and cotton paper battle axes and blue jays for their coloration and when possible prefers to consume lungfish, water buffalo cheese, and blueberry wine and can't stand brown recluse spiders. Yeah, I, I don't know about you, but um, I've forgotten most things about Mass Effect because Mass Effect is really old. I still think that they need to remaster that first Dragon Age, though, just because Mass Effect mentioned. made me think about Bioware slightly. Yeah, the one good Dragon Age. Yep. The question is, is who would do it? Oh, man, we didn't even get to trade. Took too long. Well, shit.
Turns out there are too many dwarves in the fort right now that, you know, are trying to do a variety of things. Yeah, okay, I need a new broker. Sorry, Shadow can't be the broker because Shadow is also a religious figure. And the problem with that is they're like jumping in between multiple things all the time. It's real bad for actual actual efficiency of broking, brokering happening. How many unnamed dwarves are left? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen dwarf is left. I mean, Mass Effect 1 was a really neat thing for the time. It was relatively re revolutionary, but the, the mechanics in those games are pretty standard these days. Like, um, I mean, may maybe I'm completely off base with this, but from my perspective, it, it really seems like when Mass Effect was new, it was neat, novel, and different. And the older Mass Effect gets, the less interesting it becomes in hindsight. But maybe I'm off base. I don't know. Mass Effect 1 is your favorite to replay? Yeah, I, I only ever played 2. It's probably also why I've forgotten so much about it. The clunky number 1 didn't bother you at all? Or did you play, like, the remastered editions? Or, or like, the that, like, anniversary pack or whatever it was called? Or did you play, like, the originals? This is really interesting because I've only ever played the sequel, so I don't really have a valid take, but I was always under the impression that people liked Mass Effect 2 the most, yet here nobody seems to like Mass Effect 2. Except for Neutron Dwarf, so I take that back. Uh, the Forgotten Beast, uh, Nagok uh, Odd for Darlu, uh, has come, a gigantic three-eyed shrimp. It has stubby tails, and it undulates rhythmically. Its lemon exoskeleton is leathery. Beware, it's deadly spit. Well, it could totally kill us. Or it's going to try, anyway. See where this thing goes. Made you jump in your own dwarf fortress game? Yep. Yeah, I feel that, man. Whew. Well, ask the broker just charged in. It also happens to be in the military. So it's not entirely an uncalled for charge. Punches the Forgotten Beast in the left foot with his left hand bruising the muscle. And then it misses twice. And then it punches the Forgotten Beast in the left first leg, which of course tore the fat. Um, the manager who also happens to be, or the broker who also happens to be asked right here, is uh, continuing to fight with the creature, and there is now creature's blood on the ground. Uh, the Forgotten Beast uh, breaks the grip because he actually bit it in the left first first uh, foot, and then latches on firmly, and the Forgotten Beast kicks him, uh, which bruised him, but that doesn't really do much. And the broker then punches it again, which bruises and tears it. It's actually bleeding, uh, and he's literally just punching it. Uh, so he's, he's still punching it, I would assume. He's still punching it, and uh, in fact killed it, by kicking it in the head with his right foot and the bruising the muscle and the brain. 
And uh, I'm going to go here. And I'm going to give this a Ast a nickname. Ast the Shrimp. He's the Shrimp. Well done, Dwarf. If you want to know how many you have, type in exclamation point tickets, Holo. Really sucks that I miss trading, but and also unfortunately just is what it is. Just means it's gonna make it harder to trade in the future. There you go. Laya's and Laya's got the rules down. Yeah, I don't actually um fully understand why Coke go in here, but this thing can't load it. I don't get it. I wonder. So I've got coal on here. Let's also throw bitumus coal in there. Because I wonder... Because coke isn't listed anywhere in this. So I wonder if that'll allow those to go through. I guess not. So instead I'll just make this stockpile bigger, I guess. Let's go. Hmm. I don't really want to make a black bronze bucket. I'm going to add real quick. Hold on. Uh, other objects. It's like just make bracelets. That's what I'll do. In fact, you, you want more plan, uh... What are you saying? Okay, I'm trying to catch up on a conversation here. 
I think the game was really damaged by the ad crafting to everything and make uh, it a super world zeitgeist of the time. So many of the planets were just empty based uh, content padding and I couldn't stomach it. Oh, are we talking about No Man's Sky? I like the emptiness. <laughs> I'm, are, are we talking about No Man's Sky? Is that, is that what this is? Reads like No Man's Sky. Mass Effect Andromeda. Ah, got it. I, I do have to say, though, I, I very much am on the side of not everything needs to be a craftathon. Cyan Corp is making some all right crafts into some all right rings. What's the story with this fort so far? It's a quaint little town in the middle of a big ol' river that is mostly dammed. And uh, we are, uh, you know, trying to build a paradise the dwarves love to live in, but unfortunately pesky creatures keep attacking us and it's slowly gonna drive us to insanity. By paradise, I mean every single dwarf gets their own bedrooms, their own quarters, and ideally their own workshop and their own tomb assigned to them. But that is becoming less and less and less common these days. Also, these dwarves can be unstationed because I just realized I screwed up pretty badly. They shouldn't be stationed there still. And also explains why things are moving so slowly. And you just claimed a ring, Neutron Dwarf. After putting on a well-crafted item, too. Let's see if we can give these dwarves a break to socialize for a bit, because we need migrants, is what we need. So I'm kind of hoping that we can get them to the end of their needs so that we can, you know, go in here and make things a little better. Let's also just go into minecarts and just forbid all minecarts, because minecarts just kind of cause other jobs to happen pretty consistently. Also, wouldn't that just make you gluttony and also a demon instead of an angel of greed? Sire is no longer the most stressed out dwarf in the fort, but hey. Afraid after the reliving experiencing trauma. What's that? Having a drink without using a goblet, cup, or mug. Hmm. Let's make some mugs. I mean, it's a it's a ring to rule those who are under you, because you're wearing it and you rule them already, and it just makes sense that way. Can't really speak beyond with that, though. Rick Dwarf here, we need you to go make some friends. You're reciting a poem. How lovely. I'm starting to think I need to make an expansion to this uh, area. You know, actually, here's something I'm gonna do. Make a meeting area right here. I'm gonna put a different um, temple right here, because this seems like a good spot for an outdoor temple. Uh, so for temple, oops. Well, it's now dedicated to Okang, which is Okang, but not optimal and not what I wanted to select. I wanted to select a religion that I do not yet have a temple for. I already have one for the South Creed. Maybe I'm not going to build a dedicated temple for any of these then. Because <laughs> there's too many, like, one person worships this religion. This specific fork of this religion. Okay. Oh no is not a super common god. You're not super common. How about you? No, no. Okay. Nish is. Osad is. Nish is wealth and trade. Your death and suicide. Right, of course. Longevity games. Murder! The devil of witches. Uh, let's make this a temple to the god of murder. And it's called the Hellish Cathedral. You know, that suits it. Handsome? I don't get that very often. What's up, Trizuka? 
How is the truest of the of the bazookas? The hellish cathedral? Yeah. It's the, the, the god of murder. Alright, well, we do have plenty of dump items getting thrown out, which is good. Butchering an animal is happening, which is also good. Okay, there is one minecart I need to unforbid, though. It's gonna be this one. No, just true Zookas, not, not bazookas, just true Zookas. It's good to see you, dude. It's been, it's been a while. I haven't seen you in, in recent memory. All right, so my fan just spun up and the frame rate went down. Huh. That's a little weird. the Batman again. Yay. Solved. More like nah, 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 nah. Less of Batman sounds and more just nah sounds. Stone worker was found dead. Did you get hit by a minecart? Yep. <laughs> you in fact got hit by a minecart. Well, I mean, I suppose it is what it is. Well, at least you already have a tomb assigned. Been trying to get your bachelor's degree and you've studied for many, many years and you finally got that damn paper this Thursday. So what's the plan for the, uh, I don't know, the next week and a bit? Aside from, oh fuck, I need to get a job probably. What, 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 what's your plan now that you have this bachelor's? And also, it's good to see you. and I'm, I'm glad that you succeeded in getting in, in that goal because that's no small feat. It's like more like size 11 shoes, actually. Pretty big. If I do say so. And Napalm, you have a good night. Part of you got amputated. Uh, no drive to play. No drive to play video games because uh, they were a stress release. Yeah, getting a job, adding some metal festivals. And yeah, there you go. Now the rest of life can begin. That's honestly like my favorite way to refer to like changes like that, where it's just a oh yeah, well the rest of life can get going now. It's like the easiest thing to think about, probably. Everybody's hauling things one piece at a time. Lots of stuff getting hauled out, lots of stuff getting thrown away.
Why is there so many plump helmets spawn right there? Like, literally just the cape needs to be thrown out. The rest of that can stay. But yeah, no, I mean, that makes sense. Like, you know, you've probably, like, how many, you, you said that you've been studying for many years, right? So, like, you're very used to the, the day in and day out, I would assume, of the normal studying routine, I guess. And then to have that taken away would be a pretty massive, like, habit shift, if nothing else. So, you know, I got to say, like, congrats, though. Because that is a huge deal, genuinely. That is honestly a massive thing to achieve. It's it's kind of, um, well, not kind of. It, it will always be a little crazy to me because, like, as somebody who's never done any post-secondary at all, it's kind of wild, I guess, to even imagine what that process would be like. Because I've never had the situation or the opportunity would I, where I would ever yeah it feels really weird get PBH. something like that but welcome back to the land of the subbed and, and enjoy the uh, continued ad free viewing and it's good to have you around again mate it's like you know you're, you're you're kind of getting up there now as far as like time that you've been watching the channel anybody who's followed me before Dwarf Fortress launched on Steam is kind of a you've been around a bit so thanks for tuning in Appreciate you, dude. Saying from experience the transition from having people do the paperwork for you to doing all of it yourself felt like a kick in the nuts after getting your degree? Uh, oh, not quite an OG sub. No, OG sub, you have to have at least a 70 month resub. Of the, and now of those, I do have quite a few of them. Although I also give a uh, a, a kind of honorary OG sub to uh, people who've been subscribed for, you know. To people who've been subscribed for uh, l longer than, or maybe initially subscribed back a long time ago and then hasn't been subbed for a while. But maybe they're back now. You know, st stuff like that. Because there are quite a few of those, like people who subscribed to this channel and then didn't for a while and now are back and other various things like that. Favorite type of stone? You're talking about color wise? I think color wise and all around use, I would say marble because it's a flux. Uh, it's used for making steel. It's got a really nice color to it. It genuinely looks nice. I'm, g I'm gonna have to say probably marble. Uh, we have several mods in chat. They shout out people who raid me and uh, tune in and say nice things and uh, remind everybody that they are appreciated in chat and ban people who are dick bags. Yes. Mods for this game are largely irrelevant. You got into DF like a year and a half before Steam released? You got into DF back when I was still doing like long death, so. Rip piggies, uh, some, sometimes it's bacon time. You know, I, I used to really like Obsidian in older versions, but I just, I don't like the way Obsidian looks in premium. To me, it just looks like somebody forgot to include an asset <laughs> like it, it looks like a like an error like a mistake to me i i just i i wish i liked it because i liked it a lot in older versions of the game but in current versions i just find it kind of difficult to look at to be honest with you like i do use it in a decent number of forts and i have used it in a decent number of forts but it only is usable to a certain degree as far as i'm concerned
Tarn divided by zero and removed all assets. Yeah, there you go. Microcline? Microcline's a fun one, but uh, a lot of old school players don't like Microcline because uh, this game used to have pretty poor choices when it comes to like uh, a lot of its graphics, not just the fact that it the game was in ASCII. But the reason I, I say that it made a lot of poor decisions is like there were certain colors like the ones used for um, Microcline that were so bright they were hard to look at and actually like hurt your eyes. So players would get very upset when they found microcline because of how bright the color was because nobody would modify their colors to make them less bright or very few people did anyway so if you ever run into somebody who goes ew microcline it's probably because they've been playing this game for way too bloody long and hopefully have gone outside in the last 10 years I also like the color of rock salt. I also like the color of um, dolomite. See, I would do that if I actually lived on or played on maps that had like ridiculously large amounts of materials, but I kind of don't. So I don't really do anything with hematite for stonework or anything. Because it's like, because I play with everything set to rare, usually, if not harder to find, like it, it'll take me hours to find my first metal deposit on a map that I'm embarking on. What are you storing in stockpile? I mean, Dwarf Fortress is not, it's not uncommon for like me to see reviews for Dwarf Fortress that are just like, person has 45 hours and they're like, I bought this game three days ago. Positive review. There's a lot of that. Like this game's kind of a time sink. Especially if it catches you. Yep. That is accurate, Darius. Something like that, yeah. You know, actually what I should do is iron picks. What did I just queue up? Mm, assemble a breast. Mm -hmm. Iron pick. I need more miners. Let's turn the burrow back on. I really don't want them running back and forth out into here all the goddamn time. It's really not good for their health. I think you bought it at the start of this year or the end of last year. There was somebody, it was like a month after the game came out, who was just like, Blind, how many hours do you have? And I was like, uh, like 400 or something. And then they were like, well, I have, it was like 1,200 1, and something hours. I'm like, have you closed the game since it launched? And they were like, no. I'm like, well, there you go, you goddamn cheater. Figured out how you have so many hours then. Nah. So many, so much coal here. So much goddamn coal. <laughs> I found this game eight hours ago and already have eight hours. Weird. Yeah, I don't know. This is just a sign of me being like kind of out of touch, but I'm still just amazed and will always be amazed that people are still only just discovering this game. Like, genuinely, that is something that I think is going to amaze me for the rest of my existence, that there are people that still haven't found this game yet. Because to me, it's just, it's such a, such a known quantity for me, I suppose. You discovered it this year because of me. So you also discovered me this year, I assume? How'd you find me then?
YouTube recommended a video of cool pixel art dwarves and you had to watch it. Huh. It's an interesting concept, I guess. I gotta say that that's that's a new one. Somebody clicking on my video because quote cool pixel art dwarfs. That that is a new one. It's kinda neat though. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I just kind of always presume that people are aware of this game's connection to like Minecraft's existence and whatnot. But you know, it's really just me being naive, <laughs> I suppose. You've been fancying making mining pits to start uh, to to start of in my forts. Uh, whenever it's available, the first cavern elevation, and all of the stone uh, conveniently dropping down in one spot as you channel. Well, I mean, it's not exactly convenient, but especially if you're pulling them out of the caverns. The caverns have all sorts of fun that come out of them, but. Please. So much aquifer. The only thing that drives you crazy is not being able to automate the slaughter of livestock. So... If you're using DF hack, you can type on uh, you can turn on auto butcher, um, but to me, you're kind of losing out on a lot if you do that. Blind is naive to ignorance. Did I just say that? I'm confused. I mean, I, I I don't think that thinking that somebody, yeah, I, I don't know if I would describe that describe that as me being naive to in, like ignorance, but I guess that's just a weird way of describing what I said. Um, yeah, it, for me, it's it's less of a why why automate like livestock. The, the okay, so in a technicality. Livestock butchering is automated. If it wasn't automated, you would have to manually queue up a job after telling them what livestock to handle and deal with. Um, I think that livestock populations is a pretty important thing that the player has to keep track of, so I don't see it as an issue, really. Um, I'm also going to do something. Where are we? We're right here. Looking for an abandoned location. Holy shit, that's a big goblin fortress at this point. This is a fort of spider doomed, which has no civilized population. I'm looking for locations with no civilized population. It's a shrine, another shrine, big old tower. I don't want to just go explore all of these caves. Because I think that would be fun. The Lair of Pine Mind. Shrine of Gale Castles. How about we go here? Let's go to the... Forest Retreat of Qu Swamp Quakes. And get those books. Send all my, all my entire military, because this is a great idea. And I don't know what could possibly go wrong. I mean, you're not making total sense to me, Genosi, but it's, it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll give it to you. 
Miss Askey, because uh, you were so new to the game, your imagination would fill in some of the stuff you didn't really understand. I mean, that's my biggest problem with the graphical tile sets and was always my excuse for why I loved the graph the, the ASCII back in the day, right? Like that was always my reason for enjoying ASCII back in the day. And um, I think we'll forever kind of be getting a phone call from suspected spam caller. If it's important, they'll leave a message. Um, yeah, I, I think for me, it's, it's, it's less about being naive, really, and more just about, turns out it's real easy to, you know, presume that everybody has already heard of something that you've heard of and been aware of for the last 10 years, right? It's like, oh. I have a bunch of visitors. Did I forget to make this? Oh, okay. Where are they hanging out then? Well, none of them have stuck around, so I guess I can remove this. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend the next 10 minutes or something expanding this tavern a little bit because it's a bit on the small side. Let's, uh, I'm real tempted to just get rid of all these bodies. You know, actually, let's just move the front door. Let's pull this lever and go down here. That's already pulled. So I've officially moved the front door. And I'm going to build a stairwell up here somewhere, I think. This is just going to become the front door. Yeah, I think we're just going to do that. This is just going to become the front door. Yeah, I think that'll work. Salt can go there. And we can do chert along the top. Uh, they're not free. And the reason they're not free is every time you rob them, it injures your reputation with that faction slightly. Which means, in the short term, nothing. It's fine. No issue. In the long term, you're going to be at war with every single faction you steal stuff from. Including your own, if you're doing that. It's one of the most common player, not mistakes really, but like one of the biggest noob traps in Dwarf Fortress. Ah, <sighs> you pathetic pseudo role-playing racist. I mean, what? Uh, here's the thing. Elves are the most valuable trade partners in the game, but you don't actually get anything that they give you that's the things that they have that, that's actually valuable if you rob them. So if you're robbing an, the elves, you are getting nothing that they would normally give you that is of extreme value because you're robbing them. The stuff that they have that's of extreme value is large animals and mounts, which they won't bring at all if you are robbing them and taking their stuff. So the only person who's being robbed is you, because you're being robbed of some of the best trade goods in the game. Well, I mean, maybe if you change your strategies, your survivability and longevity of your forts will increase, Red Euro, and then you'll learn and get better at the game. But maybe not. Oh, 
I was trying to haul or out of it before I flooded it, and my dwarves kept trying to climb out of it, failing, falling, and injuring themselves. You're not sure why? Hmm. Well, they take the shortest pathway out, so if you're forcing them out of a thing, they will either, if they're stuck in a thing, they'll try and climb out. So, sounds like they were stuck. It's all humans currently. Sounds like you're settled very far away from elves. Would be my bet. I know it's Swamp Quake or Swamp Quack. Quake. I'm pretty sure it's Quake. Uh, but it looks like Swamp Quack to me. It's missing the E. I'd rather make peace with goblins than to cater to the elves. Yeah, that's fair. But it's impossible to make peace with goblins unless they're not run by a demonic overlord, which is extremely rare. Because they're always run by demonic overlords. It's battle war with goblins is an inevitability. War with elves is optional. Oh, well, you're in prison right now. I ate your lobster, so I will remove you from the squad. So this is no longer an issue. Okay, you're zipping off to go explore. How about you? It's almost like if you have dwarves that are climbing through your moat, you've really screwed up your pathing into your and out of your fortress. Because if dwarves for any reason are climbing a wall, it means that's their only option to get somewhere. Probably not. Have you ever gone to war with them? Well, let's... Because if dep it depends on the types of animals they have access to. Because elves uh, bring mounts and large animals into war. So if they happen to have uh, very effective animals, then, then they're very good. If they don't, then they're very bad. They really seem to integrate better than elves. Are you talking about like you had poets and whatnot? Okay, so we need to talk about and discuss the difference between factions and species for a second here. Elvish factions have wood, don't trade for wood unless it's grown, and don't like trading for weapons or animal products or any of that. They're the religious zealots. Elves are not elvish factions. You can be a dwarf and be part of an elvish faction. You can be a human and be part of an elvish faction. It's a bit archaic, and it's the same with um, dwarves as well. Because dwarves in elven like, d dwarven factions, right? You'll only get dwarven migrants in fortress mode, and the reason for this is it's really tedious and tricky to make and know that you need to make clothing for different sized creatures. So, the game doesn't allow for natural migration of dwarves. However, when it comes to somebody who's integrating into society, there's almost no difference. If they're there and their needs are met, which is the same pretty much for any creature, if they're there and their needs are met, they'll be happy. If they have clothing, food, and whatnot provided for them, they'll be happy. The hardest ones to integrate are humans because they need different sized clothes. It's just as easy to integrate an elf into dwarven society as it is to integrate a human into dwarven society or as it is to integrate a goblin into dwarven society. I'm just getting mildly annoyed with this, so I'm just gonna get rid of those items. Elves and goblins all wear, wear, wear the same size clothing, yes. Any race can be the king of a faction, right? This is how like one of the most legendary dwarf fortress stories of all time is a uh, a, an elf that ran the dwarven a dwarven faction. Wow, this dwarf has a lot of earrings. One, two, three. You have three, four pairs of earrings, and an amulet on your head because they don't wear them on their neck. They wear them on their head. I'm actually curious about something. I'm gonna delete this.
uh, because necklaces were added before the game had necks. So uh, head was considered a slot for gear, and then they added necklaces, and because there's still technically no way to put things on your neck, just on your head, uh, necklaces go on your head, not your neck. I'm sure they could fix that without too much trouble, but it's something that isn't fixed yet or changed yet. You, if any, you can choose anybody who is a citizen of your fortress. It doesn't matter what race it is. Yeah, but you know, if I say it that way, I just sound like I'm like being mean and people get weird with me when I'm just like, you know, race doesn't equal citizenship of country in Dwarf Fortress. And it's one of the reasons I like this game so much. Necklace on your head is top fantasy for you. I mean, it's a cultural thing. They didn't always have necks, so they don't know how to properly utilize necks. And then these are forbidden. You know, I, I was about to say, now that my squads have all left, we're going to get attacked by a Forgotten Beast, right? Forgotten Beast, Dorku has come. A, a towering skinless alligator has a knobby trunk and it squirms and fidgets. Beware its flaming breath. Uh, it burns. And I fears it. Yeah, accurate. Uh, dwarves are currently indoors, so they shouldn't be in the caverns. Hmm. Oh, wait, never mind. This isn't the layer it can get in. We're good. <laughs> Why are you carrying a minecart? Dwarf, are you okay? Odd choice. Skinless alligator? Why are you saying damn? It's not a beaver. Only beavers say damn. Skinless alligator says or something like that. Right timing, but wrong floor. So we're fine. Also, UDK, I cannot fully describe how grateful I am for those 200 bits and $2 in bits. Uh, it's because it filled up the leaderboard, and when the leaderboard isn't full, it makes my brain sad. So thanks for making my brain slightly less sad in this exact occasion. You're taking notes on that minecart setup? Don't! It's terrible. I do have a tutorial on how to set up minecarts, which will probably give you a better idea. How do you get clothing in a stockpile to just be worn clothes? Make a stockpile that is a refuse pile and add clothing to it. Uh, I'm so glad to see you. I'm totally not prepared for an attack in your game. <laughs> Sorry, you're, you're not the first person I've startled today with my monster sounds. So chat, it's quarter to four. The songs of six, thoughts for evening game? What do you think chat? Ah, I think that telling somebody what it, real dwarves can and cannot do is called gatekeeping. And there's only one rule with gatekeeping, yeah? Here, let me try. It's, it's better that I show you instead of explaining it verbally, right? So any dwarf can gatekeep. It's great. You, you click here and you click add new work detail, okay? So what, whoops. Wait, 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 let me, let me. 
Okay. Add new work date detail and you go into the custom, okay? And you write gate keeping, all right? And then it's very simple. Nobody does this, yeah? Now, quit gatekeeping. Sheesh. We're seeing dwarves praying, which is a good sign. Means we're finally working our way through all these bloody jobs. almost 24 months. Hell yeah, Deep Space. It's almost been two goddamn years. Someone clip that, please. It's not, it's not an original joke. I didn't make that one. Somebody on the Dwarf Fortress subreddit made it around the time Dwarf Fortress launched. Keep thinking minecart tracks or ladders? It's a very flat ladder. I think this minecart has too far to go. I'm also going to add a second one onto it, I think. So I'll put a second minecart on this same track. Why is that minecart splattered with blood? Why isn't your minecart splattered with blood? Is the question you should be asking. And uh, it has claimed a clothes shop. We're having an artifact. Also, it clearly means that that minecart is a murderer and can't be trusted. It's definitely what it means. I am so jealous you get to see Clowncore, dude. <laughs> I would love to see Clowncore. That would be a fan. I, I would, mm, man, jealous. Genuinely jealous, man. Send them, I, that, that minecart committed a crime? We must arrest it. I agree. I love the, like, references to, like, like who the clown core people actually are. And then it's just like, you go look at the Wikipedia page. It's like, no one can confirm nor deny the authenticity of this post. It's probably fake. Do not believe this fake news. And it's just like, well... Suspected to be the member of this performance act. It's like, definitely not. Nope. Absolutely not this person. Um, I'll be honest with you. I can't remember who it killed. I love how everybody talks. Uh, I have a question. Do you guys make statues for every single dwarf that dies every single time it happens all the time and then remember every single dwarf's death and have like a little personal ceremony every time that happens? Because I don't really do that. And then like... A dwarf dies, and then, like, years later in game, somebody in chat's like, well, obviously you must have put a statue of that dwarf's death next to where the minecart leaves from, and I'm like, what? Why would I do that? They were a nobody. Anyway. I just, it's its funny, like, trend in chat. People always say this stuff, and it's like, do you do that in your own games? Because that's a lot of work, man. Hmm. 
Is this the same damn fort? Yes, it's the same fort, damn it. Damned if you dwarf and damned if you fort. You bought a unicorn from some elves. Uh, what could I do with it? Uh, let it graze. It's available. It's just a horse. Um, it, it needs... It, cavern floor is good for it as long as it has moss on it. It's a lot of gems. Well, good luck there, Id. <laughs> Dumb ways to die. So kind of a spoiler for next year for anybody who pays a lot of attention and has a good memory. I've sort of low-key told Fog that next year's charity marathon um, theme for his animations should be Dumb Ways to Die. Okay, so every, zero days if full of desired items. We're just going to stick with that. And you're just going to load all refuse types. And wear. Which means clothing. This is how you make a refuse pile that takes all clothing of, of broken quality. Basically only give them the lower ones. Oopsies. Don't, don't select the higher quality ones, obviously. That's basically it. Then whenever there's, you know, broken clothing, it just goes into the refuse stockpile because it won't go in unless it's damaged. You mean undwarfed? I don't think you get dwarfed by dying. I think somebody must be outside because my neighbor's dog is going ballistic. All right, my military has returned. Let's see how they did. Aside from taking way too long to get there. Mostly because it took them forever to leave the actual map itself. We searched, searched swamp quakes and we got a bunch of books. A lot of uh, world of animal diets, could it be animal diets and great foraging behavior. And uh, the trees of brief history Those are, are the books that we've obtained. The Merc of Crevices. Wind Crack. The human, the human cave of Wind Crack. Okay, that's a pretty good name. The human camp of Tummy Fight. <laughs> I want to go attack the human camp of tum Tummy Fight, Jet. Or the kobold type, type camp of, uh, Baltrius? <laughs> the huge wind crack? Really? Thanks for sharing. Um, we're gonna go uh, attack this one. What about this one? Play dream. Wind crack is pretty good. It's good to see that, you know, they're we're pretty successfully putting this thing together. All other stuff you'll pass. Hey, I also like whiskey. Whiskey good. Sounds like a place where they do tummy fights. It sounds like it. Uh, Id, the clother, has offered Igeth, uh, has created Igeth Cole, a cave spider silk, silk cloak, and offers it to the big fall. I think 
that my mayor can wear a big silk cloak. That seems like a good mayor's uniform, you know? Once the mayor picks it up, we'll read its description. Currently has a pigtail cloak, but is going to probably be wearing two cloaks in a moment. Why are the mad mad? Why are they? That's a good question. I don't think we'll ever know the answer to it. Uh, in this particular fort, it's due to death, mostly. Massive piles of death. Uh, dwarves inherit the religion that their parents have. Religions are started at the beginning of civs, so when a civilization starts. So at the, in world gen, re the religions are founded around the gods that it pre-exist. And then it's spread based on who, uh, you know, talks with who. Having a glance at this new Timberborn update. It did suddenly make its water physics look not trash, which is nice. Still don't trust it to not make me just want to play Dwarf Fort, though. Yeah, I don't know. I really liked. wish I liked Timberborn, but... Playing that game is not super fun for me, looking at the Timberborn update. Can adventurers make people swamp religions? I don't know what the heck a people swamp religion is. Uh, this cloak uh, is all craft worship is of the highest quality. It is it is decorated with cave spider silk and encircled with bands of oval cut shell opals. It is made from cave spider silk cloth, and this object is adorned with hanging rings of trifle pewter and menaces with spikes of sterling silver and shell opal. And claystone on the item is an image of a radiant cut gems and feather wood. Swap religions. Oh, no. You can't swap. Religions are hard attached to somebody. Um, the only time that religions can be dumped or dropped is uh, in world gen. There is no uh, player-controlled ways to make dwarves change religion. They can change religions of their own accord uh, when they're off-screen, but that's about it. Truly splendid, splendid item. Such pleasure, this dwarf feels. Gonna be with friends and be with family. What's everybody doing right now? A lot of planting seeds. Yeah, the maddest dwarf is mad because his parents died. That's why the maddest dwarf is mad. All right, so since we've got that being done... Let's go down to this layer right here. Let's stop one. Stop two. It's going to be right there. And you're going to get a chestnut minecart put on you. So now that I've done that, I need to make sure that these connect, which currently they don't. You'd be mad too. Yeah. yeah, I don't blame him. Are they likely to have un other religions? I Here's the thing. I cannot give you a straight answer with this, and all of these questions are going to be eternally frustrating to you. The reason is, I don't have a straight answer. In pl it, 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 uh, 
depends entirely on the world that you generated, the types of people and the stuff and the gods that are in the world that you generated. As an example, there are times where um, dwarven factions and human factions have a massive amount of overlap. Let's say a bunch of uh, dwarven locations were taken over by humans early on, then the humans will discover the dwarven gods in world gen and are likely to worship a bunch of dwarven gods alongside of their own, or even instead or in place of their own. Uh, and the same goes for goblins, dwarves, humans, elves. So, on one hand, it's almost guaranteed that they'll have different religions and gods, but on the other hand, it varies wildly. So... I'm sorry I can't give you a like, more direct answer, but it's the best I can do. that I multiplay and enjoy? Are you asking if I enjoy multiplayer games? Because the answer is absolutely not. I, I haven't... I could not tell you the last time I genuinely had a good time playing a multiplayer game with the exception of maybe playing Clue on a tabletop simulator with some teammates during the pandemic. You have a unicorn farm in the basement. Good for you. Proud of you. I play multiplayer games because other people want to play multiplayer games. I don't really enjoy multiplayer games. The closest thing to that that I would say that I do enjoy is the uh, video game known as uh, Trackmania. I do quite enjoy some track mania from time to time, but I don't actively play it and haven't played it in several years, so. Vaka seems to really enjoy reading. Storf also used to be kind of depressed. I think I'm going to make Vaka into a scribe. Because it requires reading for them to then do scribe work, so. They end up reading a lot of books. So many people backseating? Not really the definition of multiplayer, but okay. You're just all about the weird slash bad takes today. Right, Ditsuki Tsuki. Um, Jeff Gersman got you into Trackmania? Having listened to Jeff Gersman's podcast and like every single episode of the Giant Podcast up until Jeff left. No, he didn't get me into Trackmania, but he's he's got me back into Trackmania a couple times. You just got into an argument with somebody? That's kind of amazing. Oh, no, wait, hold on. You got into another one while you're dwelling on getting into an argument, or are you immediately dwelling on the argument that you got into? It's rare, that's, that's kind of intense. Also, I don't really get people backseating me. Some people try to backseat me, and I go, oh, that's cute. What's even better is when people backseat me with wrong information, which I would say is actually the majority of the time. <laughs> like, genuinely. Poor homie. Ah, he fine. Dorf fine. As long as they don't have to drink the puke. Be fine. I could um, clean up that puke real quickly, though, by simply putting stockpiles there and setting them as empty. Floor paint looks a bit off. Mm, yeah. Well, I mean, we should clean it off, and then it would be off and not on the floor anymore. All of these dwarves have shoes. If they don't have shoes, then I failed my automations completely. Yeah, of course he's got shoes, see? It's not even coated in, in, in vomit, which means he must have done a good job with the tricky steps, too. So Napalm tell the story of the appointment of Animal to the position of Captain of the Guard uh, of the Big Fall in the early, early spring of 347. That's interesting. I 
Been out in the sunshine again after a long time away, and it makes me very grouchy. At least you're not puking. You're gonna go deal with your AC. It's failing currently because you want to sleep tonight. Yeah, that seems wise. All right, dwarves have returned. So we went and attacked a kobold camp. Be kind of fun if we were listed as at war with this kobold civ after this. Because getting attacked by them would be fun. We stole treasure from them. What treasure did we steal from them? One copper spear. You know, that could be worst. Worst? Worse. I am at war with an unnamed Batman Civ, though. Question Twinkle Veil. You know? I think I should. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and go, I should question Twinkle Veil. I don't want to go to the town of Bust Pedal, though. Especially if, the bra if it's the brake pedal that's busted, because that seems dangerous. So this is a abandoned mon monastery of certain murder. I don't think anything's going to go wrong if we start, like, stealing stuff from certain murder, right? I'm sure that'll be fine. Sending them back out. Put them to the question. Yeah. Got a place for my artifacts? I'm distributing them evenly around my fort on various pedestals. I don't really build vaults, though. There's no visitors in this fort, so nothing can get stolen anyways. So they just kind of go in places. I also don't really value artifacts all that much. Storf really wants to socialize. Also has no friends, so we kind of got to just let them socialize for a bit. Because he's lonely after being away from friends and family. Of course they can steal things from pedestals and display cases. Yeah, absolutely they can. I'll be honest, um, as somebody who's played this game for forever, I just permanently turn off visitors whenever they show up as an option. Whenever I build a room that would have visitors, I usually just disable them. Must never forget loyalty. Gotcha, dwarf. Uh, the Guild of Tweeting formed in Spirit Home. Gotcha, gotcha. That's my Farmer's Guild. Salva Daddy is meditating on murder. All right. Doesn't feel anything after having a pretty decent meal or anything due to inebriation. You okay there, dwarf? Dwarfs tossing their shoe to go get new equipment to then head back out. An exceptional steel short sword. Uh, what's funny is there is a... Um, that's the, the Guild of Tweeting is my Farmer's Guild, right? There is also a... Um, a uh, what's it called? The There is a religion in this world called the Pantomime. Or not, not, not a religion. There is a song in this world called, or type of music, I guess, called the pantomime of tweeting, which I think is oddly hysterical <laughs> and timely. Okay, you're heading out now, how about you? You're taking a napsy. Well, sometimes you need a napsy. It looks so good. Yeah, I mean the 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 portraits are like more recent than the UI update, but that's where the light came. Whoa, that's kind of fun. Hmm. 
I wonder where they entered. I love flying enemies, eh? Although it appears that Kyle has encountered one of these creatures down below, who's now running away to rest and insisting on not fighting, whereas Atir the Marksworth just kicked the shit out of it and killed it, I think. Yep, you killed Batwoman. It was a dead IP anyway. Uh, in fact, punches Batwoman in the uh, head with her right hand, and the injured part collapses. Well done. I call that a free steel spear, actually. That's pretty good value for my money. He's come back a few times. Yeah, like I said, the, the frequency at which uh, thieves appear to steal your stuff is weighted very heavily against the player, to the point where I just I choose to not really acknowledge that system until they balance it better. Even the devs are on record saying that many times too, so. Well, I guess you um, are gonna hang out in here now. I need a new surgeon, because apparently, uh, probably my surgeon left the map, actually. So Animal can be a surgeon, and I need a bone doctor, which I'll give to Selva, who is, in fact, the chief medical dwarf. And it appears that your injuries got tended to. See, so pigtail dressing and lower body from Shadow Absorber. Well, get out of here, Kyle. Go explore certain murder. Also, World Witches is a good name. Of course, not to be confu confused with World of Witches, which is uh, not something that actually exists. And the uh, but does, however, remind us that the English language is terrible. The 38 Thieves kills because you gave him a necklace as a symbol and everyone loved trying to steal it. Oh, is he wearing it? And people are trying to steal his necklace? One of my favorite things ever was I had a... I, can, I, I told my captain of the guard to go interrogate a possible criminal. They interrogated it. On the way to the, um, to the jail, they corrupted the uh, interrogator. Um, then the interrogator proceeded to give the guy the item that he was trying to steal and the guy made it out with it before I was able to reset the interrogator. But that's kind of funny. I, I don't think I've ever actually seen someone trying to steal something like that. This is one of the better artifacts I have, though. It's a, it's a rose gold spear. So many happinesses of reading the books. Meanwhile, my scribe over here is just reading, or is just praying and meditating. Dominic, how are you feeling? Getting over your lover passing away yet? Well, you do have friends, so I guess that's good. But this dwarf lost their lover pretty early on in this fort. Let's watch Lanix run around. What do you want to do? You want fighting, martial training, be with family. You know, in a little bit, I might actually just make that. Some migrants have arrived, hallelujah, after missing two migrant waves in a row. That's a relief, shall we say. And also my soldiers are coming back. Let's see how that fight went. 
we went and explored a certain demise. Certain murder. Yeah, that was it. Uh, and we stole some books, some books, some books, some books, some books. And some books. And more books. And then there's just this, this elf right here. Hmm. Human bard, not elf, rather. Human bard zombie. Don't recognize you. Untitled, but it's a very fancy copy of Untitled. Vaca Studio. Aside from reading Untitled, I do actually wonder. Uncovering Gather Ring Clinch. Oh, did my uh, make choir jobs all get like nuked? Probably. Scholar, brave, beard, irrelevant, name them Nikolai Tesla. Okay. I feel like Tesla coils would be a pretty rad thing to have in Dwarf Fort. Although the way that you'd, you, you'd make uh, the electricity for the Tesla coils is you just rub two uh, fluffy wamblers together really quickly. She feels best when everyone gets along without any strife or contention. She cracks easily under pressure and is often feels envious of others and tends to be a little wasteful when working on projects. She doesn't try to get things done perfectly and is not interested in what others think of her. Uh, generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity and begins speaking in monotone whenever she's angered and she needs alcohol to get through the working day. That's an amazing mental image. I try. Um, and, uh, personally doesn't care about art one way or another and dreams of crafting a masterwork uh, someday. Uh, she likes Pericles and, Pericles and, um, Electrum and White Jade, Walnut Wood and Ikehedra and Mules for their stubbornness and Chimpanzees for their antics and the words of the Wisps of Sparkling and the sight of the Umber Skirt and when possible prefers to consume Clown Loach and Finger Mullet Beer and absolutely hates flies. Her very long hair is tied in a ponytail, and she has a very clear voice. Her amethyst eyes are wide set, and she has a prominent chin. Her nose... Quit it. Uh, her, her nose bridge is concave, and her hair and her lips are thin, and her hair is russet, and her skin is pale pink. And uh, Nikola Tesla needs to be a scholar. Apparently, I just made deep sea fishing into a scholar somehow. I'm not sure how I got that. There it is. I clicked the wrong one. That's how. All right. I'm actually curious if you're going to go copy something. Strap them to a spinning shaft rubbing against a wool robe. Yeah, there you go. Well, maybe that's how you just set stuff on fire, but... All right, so Vodka Studio really likes his job, by the way. Uh, purple thoughts are, the ha are like permanent thoughts, so it's something that, that they will remember. So that's a good thing. Storf is sitting here copying this book. Making copies. You'll love to see it. There you go. 
And I was reading Principles of the Mountain Home. How many books are we up to, including copies? 85, not bad. Not bad. Most of these have a decent number of books in them. I'm, bound, I'm binding most of them, too. It must be deep sea fishing. It must be. One thing I will say about Dwarves Forever is they do, in fact, love reading. A new capacitor on the shelf. It's a five-minute fix 90% of the time. Huh. I uh, actually gave away my air conditioner this year for two reasons. Main one being I didn't use it at all last year, and we're not actually supposed to have that hot of a summer where I live. Like, it's supposed to be warm, but, like, not deathly so. Um, so I'm going to try and tough it out a second year without it because I don't like how much it inflates my my power costs. But the main reason that I'm um, that, that I gave it away is if it does get deathly hot and I decide I need one, low key, I'm just kind of going to buy a new one. <laughs> you live in Florida. Well, yeah, you don't really have much of an option. Vancouver, Canada. I, I can kind of get away with it. When you don't get tunics and high boots? I basically never use high boots. I don't know why. Probably should. Yeah, I mean, it's becoming a more common thing here. Like, my building doesn't have any central air conditioning at all. So... No, keep my hurricanes and you keep your cold. Please keep your hurricanes. That would mean that the world is so royally fucked if uh, I start getting hurricanes. We're royally fucked enough already. We don't need to also, like, screw up all of the weather patterns. Just some of them. Just, like, you guys can keep Justin Bieber and we'll keep Nickelback, okay? But we're also keeping Rush. Rest in peace, Neil Peart. Everything is chaos? Only if you're disorganized. Yeah, he's he's honorary American now, though. He doesn't even own a property in Canada anymore. We checked for heat. What devilry is this? Ex fucking excuse me? Oh. <laughs> okay, well, I forgot about that. I did kind of passively queue that up a while ago. Wouldn't that have been fun? To make iguanas rain? What does that mean? Uh, asked the broker just accidentally caved some stuff in on him, and he died getting... Um, so asked the shrimp, my soldier actually died to literal boulders hitting him and yet faint yellow diamonds striking him in the upper body, bruising the muscle and bruising the heart through the pigtail cloak. A limestone strikes the broker in the head and an injured part explodes into gore. Well, that's it. That's your life. Shit. What a way to go. Damn. Chat, can I get a round of Fs for the shrimp? That was a good dwarf. And also, today. what a goddamn way to die. And can somebody please clip that? Shot to the heart with a diamond and head crushed with a rock. I mean, damn, son. Damn, son. 
Hey, chat room. I think that might be a good spot to leave it. Pick her back up tomorrow. Is the diamond still embedded in the corpse? F important question. Uh, no, it is not. It is on top of him, though. So what I'll say is this, chat. I think it's time for us to go play some uh, Songs of Six. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go play some Songs of Six. To those of you who are hanging out and watching right now, I just have to say a real quick thank you. If you're going to stick around, I'd appreciate that, of course. And if you're going to stick around, could I get a round of beers? But YouTube chat, don't panic. I'm not actually shutting you guys down. Twitch chat for the VODs. Can you say goodbye, YouTube? As always, if you'd like to find more VODs, you can find those at uh, the at Blind Extras YouTube channel, which is exclamation point VODs in Twitch chat and should be in the description of the stream for the YouTube chat. And to anybody just watching the VODs, hey, go, go uh, subscribe to my newsletter. Should be in the description of the video. And also for the uh, uh, the, the, tw the Twitch peoples, here's a link. Go subscribe to my blog. Seriously, you should do that. Thought I was leaving? Well, for some people I might as well be. I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's always part of me that's real tempted to just like be super mean and mocking to the YouTube view count because I don't know. Like, I went on vacation and got sick for a week in a pretty short period of time. I got sick first and then went on vacation, and since then, YouTube, like, the recommendations for my stream while live went from, like, in the 80,000 range down to, like, 6,000. And it's like, okay, so YouTube just, like, doesn't recommend my streams at all anymore. Awesome. <laughs> is what it is. Dying? Hmm, I don't know. I don't think my YouTube channel's dying. It's mostly just summer. This happens every year. <laughs>